again, everyone. Welcome to David Hunt Court here in Jackson, Tennessee, on the campus of Sacred Heart of Jesus School, and we are delighted to be with you. Steve Beverly bringing you all of the play-by-play -play of the Sacred Heart Lady Knights taking on TRA's Rebels, and we'll have a doubleheader for you tonight. Both the ladies and the men will be out here on the court this evening. Sacred Heart led by Jasmine Blankenship, Zoe Montgomery, and Malia Hughes, and they'll get plenty of support from Brianna Green and Eliza Johnson. Over for TRA, you're gonna hear the names Ava Anderson, Raven Sims, and Riley Bowers. They'll be among the starters who will be on the court this evening. And the, the key for both of these teams tonight is to try to get out to a hot start because both of them do not have a lot of depth on the bench. Sacred Heart goes with only eight players and TRA with nine, so they're going to be dealing with, they get anybody in foul trouble, it's gonna really stress out the rosters this evening. So as you look across the court with the warm-ups and the shoot-arounds tonight, they're about evenly matched when it comes to height. And so it's going to be, I think, probably a test of endurance tonight uh, with the lack of depth that both of these teams have. Of course, immediately afterward, you're going to be seeing those Sacred Heart Knights hit this floor, and boy, the last time we were here live, uh, it was a fantastic win in which uh, you had a, a guy named D.J. Johnson that put in the final basket of the evening to give Sacred Heart 101 on the evening, and it erupted the place. So that'll be coming your way prox approximately 90 minutes. Uh, from now, but we are about eight minutes away from tip-off here this evening, and we're glad to have you with us and hope that you'll stay with us, particularly those of you who are a fan of either team tonight. We hope that you'll all stay with us this evening and enjoy all of the action of Sacred Heart Basketball live from Jackson, Tennessee. Let's take a two-minute break, and when we come back, we'll set you up further for tonight's contest between Sacred Heart and TRA. Hey, if you're looking for something different, come to Lou's Crawfish for curbside pickup. Hey, if you're looking for something different, come to Lou's Crawfish for curbside pickup. Hey, if you're looking for something different, come to Lou's Crawfish for curbside pickup. Hello folks, this is Gary Deaton, right here at Deaton's Carpet One. I want to let you know we've been in business for 48 years. Here's what I believe has made the difference. Our lifetime labor warranty on everything we install. Our healthy living installation, bacteria and germs cannot survive in our new flooring. Our beautiful guarantee, if you don't just love it, we'll replace it. It will make your flooring experience priceless. We're located on Freedom Highway, 1000 Highway 45 Bypass in good old Jackson, Tennessee. Are you looking for an academically rich and nurturing environment that teaches Christian values to your children? St. Mary's has an accredited curriculum for kindergarten through eighth grade with extracurricular activities, fine arts, and athletics. We also offer pre-K classes for two, three, and four-year-olds. St. Mary's provides students a well-rounded experience in a loving environment, and children of all faiths are welcome. If you want to learn more about why families have been choosing St. Mary's since 1878, then call us or visit our website. Downtown is thriving and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. Buying a car is all about you. In person, over the phone, or online, we make it simple and easy. Our place is yours no matter where you live. LonnieCobbFord.com or Lonnie Cobb Ford in Henderson, where cars really are cheaper in the country. Steve Beverly back with you here at David Hunt Court in Jackson, Tennessee. Worthy Road Studios bringing you all of the color and excitement of Sacred Heart of Jesus Basketball. And tonight, <coughs> excuse me, that was one of those that when you're on live television and you're, not, you're never supposed to cough or sneeze on live TV, but it does happen on occasion. So I, I beg your forgiveness for that. We have an interesting matchup of these two teams. And 
We're also going to be looking to see what kind of outside game they have. Will they be going for the three, or will they go to the top inside players that they have? And those will be the ones that will be the go-to. It is going to be, again, I think, a test of stamina tonight, as we told you earlier, because of the lack of depth in players to be able to come off the bench for both of these schools. You also have over for the TRA Rebels, a couple of names that we haven't mentioned, Elise Warren, and she's the one who is at the free throw line right now for TRA, and uh, she's certainly talented, and uh, she's going with a big knee brace out there, but it has not really stopped her mobility a great deal. And as we mentioned, Riley Bowers, Ava Anderson, and Raven Sims, and also number 21, Lizzie Crow is another one whose name you'll be hearing a lot during the course of this evening. And I'm just checking over the court because a lot of schools have been really hit hard by illnesses and they're still battling COVID. And I'm looking on the floor and it appears they only have eight players uh, that are going to be active for TRA tonight. And I'm not sure where the reserves are at right now for Sacred Heart because right now they've only got five out on the court. We'll find that out momentarily. But we are a little bit less than four minutes to go until we tip this one off. I'm looking forward to both of these games this evening as we wind down toward tournament time. January, I've always said, is the fastest moving month, particularly the older you get, the more so that is. But January is the fastest moving month. It is hard to believe we're already at the 21st. But we are indeed here in it's not going to be that long before these teams are going to be in tournament play and trying to see how far they can advance in their respective postseasons. Also, a program note for those of you who do watch, we remind you that uh, Union University basketball will be on Sacred Hearts, pardon me, not Sacred Hearts page tomorrow. It'll be on Worthy Road Studios' website on YouTube immediately after the game, it'll be probably actually about an hour or two after the game, and then it will be live tomorrow on E Plus TV6 as well as EPlusTV6.com for those of you who do not have Jackson Energy Authority cable, and uh, you can also see it on the Union University athletic page. It is UUAthletics.com/backslash/watch, and you can pick up all the action as the Bulldogs and Lady Bulldogs take on. Valdosta State tomorrow. Well, just a little bit more than two minutes remaining before we tip this one off, so let's take one more two-minute break, and we'll be back for the start of tonight's game between Sacred Heart and TRA. Welcome to Man's Record Service. We offer a wide array of services. We are dedicated towing professionals experienced in both simple and complicated towing services. We offer light and heavy-duty off-road recovery, auto and heavy-duty towing, load shift and load transfer capabilities, and much more. We are equipped to handle any situation, no matter how big or how small. Call today at 731-424-2173. 27 years ago, a vision became a reality and Snookum Steakhouse officially opened. We cut our steaks in-house and our ribeyes are full of flavor. The steak trimmings are used to make our certified Angus Beef Steak Burgers, so when you order at Snookum's, you are getting high quality. Enjoy our salad bar and mini dessert. Also try our famous family recipe, the Pink Lush Fruit Salad. Come visit Snookum Steakhouse in Henderson, Tennessee. We are open evenings Tuesday through Saturday, but closed Sunday to Monday. Snookum Steakhouse, come taste the difference. This could be a true story. On October 3rd, a 2003 hatchback struck and killed a deer that goes by the name Buck. I know, right? He now has Buck's head proudly displayed on his living room wall. He tells a different story. Shot it. No, he didn't. And to hide his lie, he took his car to Mitchell's body shop. No, I didn't. Yes, he did. And lucky for him, they made it look good as new. And as for Buck, the story continues. 
Men, there's a new salon in Jackson, Race Clips, on South Highland, next door to Roland Safety and Supply. Whether it's a quick trim or a new look, Race Clips stylists can transform you to perfection. At Race Clips, you'll find all the products to keep you looking your best. Active duty military, veterans, and law enforcement officers receive a discount. Open Monday through Friday from 9 to 6, 9 to 3 on Saturday. Race Clips on South Highland, Jackson. Go to race-clips.com. It's time now for our national anthem. And those are your starters for this evening's game. And again, we say that it is going to be a smaller lineup starting for the Rebels. And we'll see how all this transpires as Coach Anderson having final words with his team for TRA. And let's get to it. This ought to be interesting, this entire matchup tonight. Lady Knights and the Lady Rebels, and here we go. Let the games begin, and the tip goes over to the home folks, and getting the bank right through the heart. Malia Hughes, and that was a very quick one right off the tip and taking it all the way down for the layup. And trying to go for the three right off the bat and not getting the iron to be kind. That was Emma Richardson and they'll give it back on the tip out to the Lady Rebels. It'll be interesting to see how the matchups develop in this early going. On the inside, and there's a big battle on the inside. Remember, no shot clock in high school basketball. Fall away jumper is not there for Raven Sims, and here come the Lady Knights once again off the knee, but no call on this. They got a hurry to get it across midcourt. And a turnover. 
So send it back in the opposite direction. And let's see how Coach Anderson plays it. This is really looking to be potentially a low scoring affair. And they're going just inside the paint. That one's not there for Riley Bowers. They scramble and a bit of a scrum and the alternate possession is going to send it back into the direction of the Knights. Thank goodness for Central Heat because after a high of 32 today and one yesterday of 27 in Jackson, uh, it's nice to be in warm quarters here at David Hunt Court. It has been an icy two days without any snow or ice. And the jumper right at the top of the paint rims out for Jasmine Blankenship and here come the Lady Rebels on the attack again. And they have stayed away from perimeter shots largely and been trying to work it inside the paint. And again, trying to get a screen over on the side with Warren. Didn't take that one. Bowers had a good look at it. Big three banks home. Now, that's not one I'm sure that she practices a great deal, <laughs> but... That was a big, big three that banked home for Elise Warren. And Warren comes down with the rebound off the miss from the Lady Knights. As we're under six minutes to go in this first quarter of play. Big three from the left-hand side, and it is there for Emma Richardson. Lady Rebels take a 6-2 to two lead. And they have been going to the perimeter in the last two possessions. And trying the answer shot, way too much on it. Just too much force for Jasmine Blankenship. Lady Rebels trying to pick up the tempo a bit. It had been pretty much a, a pattern type game in the first two minutes. And that one was a toss where nobody was home. And the Lady Rebels come home with the turnover. From the corner, the same three. Just too much on it on the side for Blankenship. That's one of those that Coach Mark Campbell would say, just keep shooting them and eventually they'll fall. Five minutes to go in the first quarter of play. And again, a little bit of double teaming the basketball, but both these teams have been staying pretty much in a man-to-man. -man. You don't see a lot of zone in high school girls basketball. Big three, it is an air ball. Raven Sims had the range, but just not enough force on it. And checking in. And we're trying to catch who that is. It's just checked in for the Lady Knights. The Lady, it's the Lady Rebels. It's Jackie Haler. Another big push from the side, and this time again, just too much on it. Just a little bit right for Jasmine Blankenship, but they'll play it underneath for Sacred Heart. And when you've gone about half a quarter and you only got one basket, you just need something to get an emotional uplift. Almost lost it and tipped out. Emma Richardson almost had her one. If she had been able to maintain her balance, she might have been all the way down. Lady Rebels trying to maintain. This is very, very tight man-to-man -man coverage. They're double-teaming the ball, but a big three for Bree Green. So that's the first one from behind the arc for the Lady Knights. And trying to take it all the way down and the foul. And that one is charged to Jasmine Blankenship. That is her first, and the, actually the game's first. We're halfway through this first quarter. Got a couple of subs coming in. Kayla Clement has checked in, and back into the game is Elise Warren. This is a relatively small lineup for both of these teams. Taking their time and attempting to try to see if they can screen for an open player and traveling. Hey, they say Warren took one too many steps. That is the second turnover for the Lady Rebels. 
And they picked him up in doing a little bit of a half court trap, almost stolen. And the big push for the three. And did not get the Plinko drop off of it, did Malia Hughes. And again, trying to pick up the tempo and get it down before the defenders get down there and Warren loses it. Nice pickup on underneath for Eliza Johnson. And a floater from the top of the key and Malia Hughes with four in the game now and gives Sacred Heart the lead again, seven to six, a 5-0 run. They got the first basket. You had two three-pointers for TRA and then back down at the other side five in a row for the Lady Knights. Big push, that's at the top of the key. That would not have been a three, and you got an over and back call. And at the line, that one is charged to Eliza Johnson. Second team foul of this first quarter. You got multiple substitutions coming in. One thing is for certain, there's going to be a lot more bench strength coming off and opportunity to be able to get fresh people into the game for TRA. And that's why we say it is going to be a game of stamina. And a big push from the three. It is off the top of the iron for Ava Anderson. Lady Knights. Trying to get some dribble penetration, and it goes off of the foot. And I could not quite tell who that was. It may well have been Kayla Clement. So the Lady Knights will play it underneath. Again, working dribble penetration into the paint. Almost stolen, dangerous pass on the inside. And open for the three. There you go. It is Blankenship. That's her fourth opportunity. And we said you keep shooting them, and eventually they fall. It is a 10-6 lead, and it's eight in a row unanswered for Sacred Heart. Two minutes remaining in this first quarter of play. And again, a little bit more deliberate on offense this time, but trying to take it down the middle and drawing the foul is Riley Bowers. And the foul, that foul is charged to Cam Williams. So two shots at the line for Bowers and connects on the first one. And checking back into the game is Warren. They've shuttled her in and out twice already. Perhaps because of that knee, they're trying to just spare her as much as possible. Second one is off the mark. That's the first trip anybody's made to the free throw line tonight, and here come the Lady Knights. Open again is Blankenship. Got the three again. She has that high arcing shot, and it's a 13 to seven lead, and they're gonna go to the press. Almost stolen. Nice job by Bree Green, and they are really hemming them up in the backcourt. Now, the danger is you leave some people open on the other side. Clement tried the three, and it didn't go anywhere. Kristen comes down with a rebound and taking it all the way, way high, not there. Out of bounds, and it is going to go back to Sacred Heart. With 74 seconds remaining in this first quarter. And Blankenship open again for the three. Iron a bit unkind. But underneath, the follow shot not there for Williams. She had a good look at it, and they're going to scramble. This Blankenship is all over the place following the ball, and alternate possession is going to send it back to TRA. And checking back in is Raven Sims. They're doing everything possible to keep their team fresh. And here we go again, almost stolen. Boy, Malia Hughes was really trying to sneak up on that one. Bit of a slide on the part of Richardson and a turnover. That's the third turnover of the game for this TRA team. Open for the three, short. And again, a foul underneath on the offensive board. 
and that'll send Cam Williams to the free throw line for two. This is Sacred Heart's first trip to the line tonight. Majority of their scoring has come from behind the arc, three threes. And nice floating free throw for Williams. And that's the largest lead of the contest so far at seven, at 14 to seven. And off the back of the iron and the rebound comes off to Warren. And they'll back off of that full court pressure and trying to take it all the way down and connecting. Raven Sims, she saw an opening down the middle and she took it. Nobody challenged her. 14-9 game. Well, that was, uh, they were very fortunate for that putback because that turnaround shot what looked like it was becoming a pass that was up for grabs, but instead it's a 16 to nine game and they're gonna have to hurry. And putting up a big three, oh, just off to the right. And that's gonna be at the end of the first quarter. And Sacred Heart showing some strength from behind the arc, leads it 16 to nine at the end of the first quarter. We'll be back with the second eight minutes right after these messages. At Lonnie Kyle Ford, we now give you a warranty for life on the engine and transmission. That's right, a warranty for life at no cost to you. Unlimited time, unlimited mileage, but it's only at Lonnie Kyle Ford in Henderson, where cars really are cheaper in the country. Downtown is thriving and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. Just in time to start the second quarter, Worthy Road Studios bringing you all the action. Sacred Heart leading TRA 16 to nine as we begin the second quarter. And Blankenship has finally, after missing her first four shots, she finally found the range and tried that little floater that was just pushed a little bit too hard on the iron and the foul. Nice job on the offensive board. Cam Williams. That's the second team foul of this first half, and that one was charged to Riley Bowers. Williams, very smooth at the line. She has delivered two free throws so far tonight. Short, and the rebound comes off to Bowers. And they're picking up tempo and trying to go transition, and it just did not fall. Here they go to Blankenship again. She's gonna take it with a floater that just doesn't drop. That's one of the first ones she's had tonight that's been within about eight feet of the basket. And again, and there's a steal. Great concentration by Malia Hughes and Blankenship trying to beat them inside. Instead, she dishes off to Cam Williams and it is a 19 to nine lead. So Sacred Heart, despite not having a lot of bodies that can come off the bench, they're applying the pressure in the early going with this 10 point lead. As we say, when they're in their pattern offense, TRA keeps it mostly behind the perimeter, trying to find screens, possibly be able to get to an open person in the paint and firing it hard and drawing the foul. That's Elise Warren and she'll go to the line for two. That's the fourth team foul. And she connects. Warren with four in the game. The thing that a team like TRA has to do is just stay patient because it's easy to get rattled when you get down 10 in the second quarter early. And you just got to be patient, play your game, don't get out of your game plan. Going right down the middle, and the floater does not go for Hughes. Well, they'll have a third opportunity at the basket. Almost stolen, and it is. And here she goes, and down the stretch she goes, and it does not work for Emma Richardson. 
and timeout is called by the Lady Rebels. Coach Anderson wants to talk it over. It is a 19-13 lead for Sacred Heart. We'll be back in a moment. Football looks fun. I bet I would have been great at it. The first football playing deer, they would have made a movie about me and everything. Probably get Kurt Russell to play me. But alas, me and my dreams run right over again. For fast, reliable collision repair, trust the experts at Mitchell's Body Shop. And get back out there. Knights with the ball and a six-point lead. And Blankenship, she is burning it now. That's her third three-pointer. And that's one of those daggers that you just don't want to deal with when you've closed the lead down to six, and all of a sudden you look up and it's 22 to 13 again. On the back side, drawing the foul is Sims. That's the 15 foul. She'll go to the line for two. And that foul is on Bree Green, that's her first. Nobody in any specific foul trouble so far in the contest. Checking in, Eliza Johnson and Cam Williams is going out. Eliza Johnson is going back for defensive purposes behind the midcourt stripe. Second one goes through and Sims Makes it a 22 to 15 game. And again, they're working the perimeter. Barely two minutes into this second quarter of play and the foul. And that was Kayla Clement and it looked as though she was trying to get a steal and she just absolutely almost smothered <laughs> Jasmine Blankenship and commits the foul. They got numbers on the inside, but it goes off of the hands. Pass was errant into Eliza Johnson, and here goes the turnover. Going for the bomb. No, short. And a nice job of staying with it. Elise Warren commits the foul. Rather, Warren draws the foul, and she's at the line for two. That's the second foul as Warren misses the first. That is the second foul on Bree Green. So checking in again is Cam Williams, and they'll give Green a rest. I don't know if they'll keep her out for the entire second quarter, but she'll have some time on the bench right now because they don't, they just really cannot afford to lose her at this stage of the game. Down to a six-point lead once again. Ooh, perilously close, and it is. It's a kick. Perilously close for Blankenship back to that midcourt stripe, and a nice attempt at a steal, but it went off of the foot of Raven Sims. So let's see how Coach Dotson plays it. Blankenship, have, after missing her first four, she has been a dagger with her three threes, and she's open again. Instead, they go to the inside, and it goes off the mark for Williams. But Sacred Heart will play it underneath. And we got a substitution coming in again. Warren, they're trying to keep her as fresh as possible with that knee brace on. Here goes Blankenship, and now Hughes. Tried to go to the inside, and it goes, they say it went last off the hands of Cam Williams, and so it is TRA with an opportunity to close this lead to perhaps three, and Warren getting set to check back in. So she had approximately what amounted to about an eight-second rest and then came right back into the game. And Blankenship almost pulled that one away. <laughs> Coach Anderson did not like at all the way that pass was executed on the inbounds play. It will go back again to TRA. 
this place has almost suddenly gotten to be as silent as a morgue. <laughs> Let's see if it'll pick back up again. Nice job again by Blankenship. She's all over the ball. There they go. And again, they're bringing two on the forecourt. Trying to work their way inside if they can. Looking for a screen. And the big three is an air ball again on the side for Emma Richardson. And here comes Sacred Heart on the attack. Big pass underneath and the defense was not there. Follow shot goes through for Eliza Johnson. Defense just simply went to sleep, and it's a 24-16 game. Richardson would love to let fly with another three. They haven't been that successful tonight, only two from behind the arc. Fall away jumper goes off the iron, and here comes Sacred Heart on the attack. And underneath, tipped away. Williams had an opening and it was knocked away. Zoe Montgomery has checked in now and coming out is Cam Williams. Montgomery will go up against Kayla Clement. Checking out for a bit is Riley Bowers. High arcing, that would have been a two and it's not there but she's open for a three this time and does not deliver. It goes just off the iron. About three and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Oh my goodness, that was one of those. She was trying to go in for a little hop, skip and jump and Elise Warren just simply could not control her momentum. And as they used to say, our old friend Ernest Tubb would say, I'm walking the floor over you. That's just what they would call in that case. <laughs> Good lob on the inside, but just too far underneath for Eliza Johnson to navigate that. And the curl layup is not there, and they're scrambling, and the foul. It was a good job of Warren trying to do that snatch move to get it away, and she did draw the foul, and that is going to be charged to Blankenship. And that is the seventh team foul, so they are in the one and one. Second foul on Blankenship. She and Bree Green both with two fouls. I got to have a little bit of caution there. And it goes off the mark for Warren. That's her first miss tonight in four opportunities. Blankenship open for the three, no. Just off the mark, but the nice follow underneath. Good job of blocking out, and Eliza Johnson navigates the follow shot. 10 point lead again from the corner. The three does not drop, and Blankenship the rebound. Montgomery had to slide to be able to pick that one up and the three just goes off the mark and the rebound to Sims. And she's trying to try to beat everybody, gets it and the foul. Sims was devastating and deceptive with her speed. She's got six in the game now. She'll go to the line for the three point play. And that foul is charged to Malia Hughes, her first. That's the biggest thing is that Sacred Heart cannot afford foul trouble in this contest. And getting the three point play is Raven Sims. So far in the game, seven of nine from the free throw line. That was a dangerous gambling pass and it went off of the hands of Raven Sims and so uh, Sacred Heart is very fortunate to survive that one. What you have to avoid is costly turnovers in a case like that, and that's one almost right there, but look at that on the other side of the court. Sims was trying to grasp that one away. Because you could have the equivalent of a four-point turnaround. And with two and a half to go, they'll try to keep it under control. Blankenship can pull up and take one of those from 25 feet. Oh, and she was. There was just no way Kayla Clement could control her momentum. That is her second foul. So Blankenship will play it over in the side. 
They do have some fouls to waste here in the final 220. Over and back violation. And if you want to know why that is, it is because her foot, she had one foot already over the line, and when her back foot was back, that is a turnover. So that is the third turnover for the Lady Knights. And again, you can see a potential four-point turnaround on the inside and almost a jump ball. Kayla Clement tried to force that home, but it went off the hands of one of the Lady Knights. Almost stolen, and it is. Blankenship's going to go to the deck. And you're going to have a jump ball and alternate possession. We'll go back to the Lady Rebels. But excellent defense on the part of Sacred Heart. Each team with three turnovers in the contest. And you got two subs coming in now for the Lady Rebels as we're approaching the two-minute mark in the first half. And directing that traffic is Emma Richardson. She's running the point, and I think she did not anticipate that pass coming her way, and you could see it when it was released. And so turnover number four. Sacred Knight trying to protect the home court. And one of the big things they have to do is to stay out of foul trouble because they do not have a deep bench. And you got a jump ball, but the alternate possession will stay with the Lady Knights as Montgomery was tied up. They'd like to be able to go into the locker room with at least a nine to 10 point lead. And from the corner, Montgomery. Just too much on it, but they get the offensive board. And the jump shot is there for the three for Malia Hughes, and she has seven. Blankenship is the leader with nine, and that's big to get this one back out to a 10-point lead. And let's see how Coach Anderson plays it. They got a screen, but she didn't take the three. Trying to go over the defenders, and it was not there. And Montgomery, the rebound off the miss by Sims. Blankenship open. Yes! That is number four. Blankenship in double figures with 12. And that is the biggest lead yet at 13 for the Lady Knights at 32 to 19. Richardson would love to be able to pull up for an answer shot. Again, they're taking their time. The one thing they want to do is get at least one score here. And Richardson is open. Yes! Richardson connects to make it a 10-point game again. Now let's see if the Lady Knights try to hold this for the final shot of the quarter. And that one just went off the hands, just a little bit too high for, and so they swap turnovers. And they go to Montgomery back to. And a big, that's a 30-footer. Yes, sir. Malia Hughes right before the horn nails it home. And that comes off the turnover. And at halftime, Sacred Heart leads 35-22. to And that was after a 16-9 lead at the end of the first quarter. It was a 19-13 edge in quarter number two. And so, the Knights doing a good job so far this evening, protecting the home court, and out of their totals tonight, they have already picked up seven three-pointers, and that's accounted for 21 of their 35 points. The biggest thing they gotta be careful about is fouls, Jasmine Blankenship and Bree Green with two each. Kayla Clement has two for TRA. And we're going to take a three-minute break. And when we come back, I'll give you all the scoring totals here at halftime. Hey, if you're looking for something different, come to Lou's Crawfish for curbside pickup. Hey, if you're looking for something different, come to Lou's Crawfish for curbside pickup. Hey, if you're looking for something different, come to Lou's Crawfish for curbside pickup. 
Hello folks, this is Gary Deaton, right here at Deaton's Carpet One. I want to let you know we've been in business for 48 years. Here's what I believe has made the difference. Our lifetime labor work on everything we install. Our healthy living installation, bacteria and germs cannot survive in our new flooring. Our beautiful guarantee, if you don't just love it, we'll replace it. It will make your flooring experience priceless. We're located on Freedom Highway, 1000 Highway 45 Bypass in good old Jackson, Tennessee. Are you looking for an academically rich and nurturing environment that teaches Christian values to your children? St. Mary's has an accredited curriculum for kindergarten through 8th grade with extracurricular activities, fine arts, and athletics. We also offer pre-K classes for 2, 3, and 4-year-olds. St. Mary's provides students a well-rounded experience in a loving environment, and children of all faiths are welcome. If you want to learn more about why families have been choosing St. Mary's since 1878, then call us or visit our website. Downtown is thriving and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. Buying a car is all about you. In person, over the phone, or online, we make it simple and easy. Our place is yours no matter where you live. LonnieCobbFord.com or Lonnie Cobb Ford in Henderson, where cars really are cheaper in the country. Welcome to Man's Record Service. We offer a wide array of services. We are dedicated towing professionals experienced in both simple and complicated towing services. We offer light and heavy-duty off-road recovery, auto and heavy-duty towing, load shift and load transfer capabilities, and much more. We are equipped to handle any situation, no matter how big or how small. Call today at 731-424-2173. 27 years ago, a vision became a reality and Snookum Steakhouse officially opened. We cut our steaks in-house and our ribeyes are full of flavor. The steak trimmings are used to make our certified Angus Beef Steak Burgers, so when you order at Snookum's, you are getting high quality. Enjoy our salad bar and mini dessert. Also try our famous family recipe, the Pink Lush Fruit Salad. Come visit Snookum Steakhouse in Henderson, Tennessee. We are open evenings Tuesday through Saturday, but closed Sunday and Monday. Snookum Steakhouse, come taste the difference. Time for your halftime report in this Sacred Heart and TRA battle with the girls first off. And Sacred Heart with a big three right before the horn to extend their lead to 35 to 22 and they have been on top almost from the get-go leading 16 to 9 at the end of the first quarter let me give you your statistics here at halftime for tra emma richardson's had a couple of threes and a two she is their leader with eight points raven sims has seven elise warren with six and one for Riley Bowers for their total of 22. Over for Sacred Heart, after being a bit cold, missing her first four opportunities from behind the arc, Jasmine Blankenship went on a tear, and she had four threes in the first half to lead everybody with 12 points. Malia Hughes also came through with two three-pointers, including one that was about a 30-footer, I mean, that was a college-style three-pointer that she put in. She has two threes, two twos for 10. And then Cam Williams has contributed four, Eliza Johnson four, Bree Green three, and Christian Holder with two. A big factor so far, though, is whereas they have only committed five turnovers to four for Sacred, Sacred Heart, TRA has given up 11 points with those five turnovers, and they have only captured four points of their own off the mistakes of Sacred Heart. And looking at fouls, Kayla Clement is the only one who picked up a second foul for the Rebels. They just did not defend the inside to the degree, and because there were so many three-point shots, they didn't collect a lot of fouls in the first half. Over for Sacred Heart, Bree Green and Jasmine Blankenship with two fouls each. And I know they'll pay attention to that, but 
Again, that's not a real serious factor with a 13-point lead unless they pick up some early ones in the second half. We're going to take one more three-minute break, and then when we come back, we'll have all of the second half of action live from David Hunt Court here at Sacred Heart of Jesus High School. This could be a true story. On October 3rd, a 2003 hatchback struck and killed a deer that goes by the name Buck. I know, right? He now has Buck's head proudly displayed on his living room wall. He tells a different story. He shot it. No, he didn't. And to hide his lie, he took his car to Mitchell's body shop. No, I didn't. Yes, he did. And lucky for him, they made it look good as new. And as for Buck, the story continues. Men, there's a new salon in Jackson, Race Clips, on South Highland, next door to Roland Safety and Supply. Whether it's a quick trim or a new look, Race Clips stylists can transform you to perfection. At Race Clips, you'll find all the products to keep you looking your best. Active duty military, veterans, and law enforcement officers receive a discount. Open Monday through Friday from 9 to 6, 9 to 3 on Saturday. Race Clips on South Highland, Jackson. Go to race-clips.com. At Lonnie Kyle Ford, we now give you a warranty for life on the engine and transmission. That's right, a warranty for life at no cost to you. Unlimited time, unlimited mileage, but it's only at Lonnie Kyle Ford and Henderson, where cars really are cheaper in the country. Downtown is thriving, and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. Football looks fun. I bet I would have been great at it. The first football playing deer, they would have made a movie about me and everything. Probably get Kurt Russell to play me. But alas, me and my dreams run right over again. For fast, reliable collision repair, trust the experts at Mitchell's Body Shop. And get back out there. Hey, if you're looking for something different, come to Lou's Crawfish for curbside pickup. Hey, if you're looking for something different, come to Lou's Crawfish for curbside pickup. Hey, if you're looking for something different, come to Lou's Crawfish for curbside pickup. Hello folks, this is Gary Deaton, right here at Deaton's Carpet One. I want to let you know we've been in business for 48 years. Here's what I believe has made the difference. Our lifetime labor warranty on everything we install. Our healthy living installation, bacteria and germs cannot survive in our new flooring. Our beautiful guarantee, if you don't just love it, we'll replace it. It will make your flooring experience priceless. We're located on Freedom Highway, 1000 Highway 45 Bypass in good old Jackson, Tennessee. And the teams are finishing up their halftime warm-ups, and we're about a half a minute away from the start of the second half as Sacred Heart on top of TRA in the girls' half of this doubleheader, 35-22. to 22. And again, four points off turnovers for... TRA 11 for Sacred Heart. That's a big factor in this 13-point margin that they have picked up in the first half. They've just picked up a lot of baskets off of mistakes on the Lady Rebel side of the court. And it is going to be Lady Rebels playing with the first position of the second half. They don't have to get in a huge amount of urgency here as we start the second half, but they can't afford to continue. And that one was short, tipped away and on the line. And unfortunately, Green, rather Bauer, she stepped away on that, and that's the sixth turnover of the game. Picking up that tempo, a lot of confidence on the floor now. Foul on the drive in, and that's going to be charged to Riley Bowers. Yeah. 
That is the second foul on Bowers. And here they go. Big high bomb for the three. Just not there for Blankenship that time, and the rebound comes off to Elise Warren. And Emma Richardson, she's already shown us that she can pull up and hit some threes. High floater. Nicely navigated for Raven Sims. Give her nine in the contest. So they draw first blood of the, and here goes another steal. Down the stretch she goes. And Sims off the turnover. And just like that, they have sliced the margin to nine. Big three from the corner is there, and there's you an answer shot right off the bat. Bree Green, that's her second three of the contest. Back to the 12-point margin. Boy, after getting those two takeaways and getting the baskets, that has got to be frustrating for Lady Rebels. And they're double-teaming the basketball and going to the corner to Warren. And it's off the iron. And the foul is going to be an over-the-back foul. That one is charged to Raven Sims. That will be her first. Actually, it's her second. I failed to notch that one on my score sheet. And here they go, working the perimeter again. And trying the big bomb on her own and connecting. Malia Hughes. And she has had a couple of big bombs in this game, and it's back to a 15-point lead, and that is the biggest in the contest so far. Foul on the drive. That will not count as a basket because it was before the shot was taken. And that is the second foul on Malia Hughes. So they've got three players with two fouls each. And they're going to have to hurry to get that one inside. Almost a five-second call in. Blankenship has been all over the ball on defense as well. And she's working against a much taller opponent, but doing a terrific job defensively. And there goes turnover number seven. And they're going to come up and try to apply a little bit of half-court pressure. Now they back off of it. And open. They got the screen. They got the three. And it is there. Blankenship. All of her points have been three. She is the game leader with 15. Trying to take it all the way home and doing so was Raven Sims. 13 points. We've got timeout on the floor. Your score, it is Sacred Heart 44, TRA 28. Back after this message. Are you looking for an academically rich and nurturing environment that teaches Christian values to your children? St. Mary's has an accredited curriculum for kindergarten through eighth grade with extracurricular activities, fine arts, and athletics. We also offer pre-K classes for two, three, and four-year-olds. St. Mary's provides students a well-rounded experience in a loving environment, and children of all faiths are welcome. If you want to learn more about why families have been choosing St. Mary's since 1878, then call us or visit our website. And as we come back, Sacred Heart turns it over, and that's going to be a foul from behind, more than likely on Bree Green. That's the second team foul, and that is the third foul on Bree. And it's also the sixth turnover of the contest for the Lady Knights. So checking back in, Cam Williams and Zoe Montgomery. And turnaround shot is not there, but the foul is going to be charged to Cam Williams. So Williams commits her second. So now they're picking up some fouls. Now that's three players with two and Bree Green with three. 
connecting is Raven Sims, but she's going to have to have some help. She is their leading scorer with 14 right now, but they've got to have some additional help. They badly needed both of those rather than just the single free throw, 44-29, and we're three minutes into this third quarter. Now look for it to go on the inside, and it did, and the foul. That was an instinctive move on the part of Cam Williams because she sensed that the defenders were going to crash down on her. So Cam goes to the line, and that foul is on Elise Warren. That is her first. Well, Williams, so far in the evening, is two out of five from the line. Misses both of them. And off the hands of Crow. Pass was there for Richardson, and, from Richardson, and it was right in her hands and just went off the fingertips. So that is turnover number, that's turnover number eight. And then here you go, swapping it off at the other end. Big bomb three, it is there. That's the first one of the evening for Kayla Clement. And let's see how they play it. And that's going to be a foul. We're picking up a lot more fouls in this third quarter as they're getting a little bit more aggressive on defense. And to be candid with you, TRA has got to take some risks. Lizzie Crow commits her first. Checking out of the game is Ava Anderson. Blankenship just goes right around her defender. They tried to go to the inside. That one was tipped away, but the foul is going to be charged. Trying to get it away or at least get a jump ball. Uh, Zoe Montgomery commits a foul. 4.14 remaining, and it is Clement to toss it in for the Lady Rebels. They spread the offense out a bit this time. One thing that that typically helps is if you get them in motion, you can usually get a screen and get somebody open, especially on the wings for a three. And the jumper. Floater was just a little bit lax. Well, got away with one there, did Warren. And she misses a third opportunity in the rebound to Montgomery. And trying to take it all the way with a floater of her own, and it rims off for Malia Hughes. But Lady Knights will play it underneath. They got two players in double figures so far tonight. Tried that bounce pass in traffic, and it's a jump ball in alternate possession. Goes back again to the Lady Knights. So what that succeeded in doing is just clipping about three seconds off the clock. And checking out of the game, Riley Bowers, and they go inside and just off the back of the iron on the attempt by Williams. The problem, though, is that TRA has not been able to capitalize on those kinds of mistakes. And that was just sort of a hooking three-pointer and getting the offensive board and knocking it home. Raven Sims, she's in double figures tonight. And that's an over-the-back foul on Warren. That is her second. So both these teams are collecting many more fouls in the third quarter than they did in the first quarter of the contest. And checking back in is Jackie Haler. And a foul once again, trying to get the steal away, is Kayla Clement. That will be her third. So Clement has three for TRA, and Bree Green with three for Sacred Heart. As we get to the three-minute mark, and the jumper. 
A little floater goes right through for Malia Hughes, and she's got 15. And on the inbounds pass, the foul was called, and that is going to be the second. No, that is the third on Jasmine Blankenship. So she's in a little bit of danger right now, but I don't think there's any reason they're going to set her down for any possible occurrence at this stage. Oh, and, yeah, her foot was on the line. That pass was just too crisp, and her foot was on the line. She wasn't aware of it, and she came down on it, and the official was right on top, and so that is yet another turnover. That is number eight for Sacred Heart. Pardon me, that's not Sacred Heart with that one. That is turnover number eight for TRA. Underneath. Lobbing it home easily, Cam Williams off the turnover. It's back to a 14-point margin, and it's not as if TRA hasn't had its chances to slice this lead. Not being able to navigate it home, but drawing the foul is Raven Sims. She'll go to the line for two. That is the 16 foul, and that is the third foul on Malia Hughes. So what you have got is Blankenship, Hughes, and Green all with three. And as we mentioned, they don't have a deep bench, so they got to be careful of the foul situation. As we're getting close to the two-minute point. Again, working the perimeter and then trying to go the inside. And there was just nothing there available, but the second one will draw a foul. Warren will go to the line for two. They tried to clog that middle up. And that is the seventh team foul, and so that is going to at least give them a bonus, although this is a two-shot foul. That is the second foul on Eliza Johnson. So Warren delivers. She has seven in tonight's contest. And give her eight. So they've sliced it down to 48 to 36. At halftime, it was 35-22. So it's been a 14-13 edge in this third quarter for TRA. They almost had a screen available for Blankenship. The turnaround jumper is there. Cam Williams now with eight. So they're going to have probably, I'm looking at the register right here, they probably could have four or five players in double figures by the time this one is over. Still plenty of time for TRA to navigate a comeback and a banking floater that goes through. A 12-point margin. And again, they decide to bring it back outside. They're probably trying to shave a little bit of time off of this, but then go into the floater again, and it caroms off left for Hughes. And on the tip out, give it back to TRA. And this would be a huge thing for them if they could cut this margin even down to 10 as they approach the fourth quarter. Remember, we've got the boys' action immediately after this one, probably be about 10 minutes between games. So don't go any, anywhere. Stay with us. And again, the jumper on the inside, that was blocked nicely. Richardson was looking to get one in the paint and just couldn't make it fall. Transition basket at the opposite end for Hughes. She's got 15. And we are at, I don't think they'll go for a final shot. They got the, got the basket for Sims there. And Sims has been a big gun for them with 18 points in the game. But they gave them plenty of time to answer it. And indeed, they did. And they got to go. They got to put it up quick. And it's short. And that is the end of the third quarter. And 
You might have thought it was moving time for TRA, but when it's all said and done, and actually there was a foul right at the end, so we're going to keep it right here. Foul right at the end. And so they cleared the free throw line for that as Sims will go to the line. And she hits. That is the fourth foul on Hughes. So she gets them both. And that makes it a 54-42 game at the end of the third quarter. And so we will be back with the final eight minutes of action right after this message. Downtown, Downtown is thriving and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack from the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio. Eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. Buying a car is all about you. In person, over the phone, or online, we make it simple and easy. Our place is yours no matter where you live. LonnieCobbFord.com or Lonnie Cobb Ford and Henderson, where cars really are cheaper in the country. Raven Sims delivering those three free throws on the foul right at the end of the third quarter. Slice that lead from 14 to 11, 54 to 43. And Sims is the game leader with 21 points. Hughes has come up with 19, open for a three. And just way wide on this. So let's see what they call they okay they said that it was that the foot she dragged the foot So the foul is charged after that shot to Cam Williams that is her third So they're going to come back down to the opposite end because they are in the one and one and this is something that could be perilous a bit for the Lady Knights Warren will go to the line. Eight points in the game so far. And the free throw line has been very friendly here in the closing moments of the third quarter and the opening of the fourth because they have picked up four in a row from the line to take a 14-point lead down to 10. This is the second one. And they scramble. And it's going to go back to the Lady Rebels. So they have a chance to cut this one to a single-digit margin. Turnaround jumper for three. It is there. Raven Sims, 24 points in the game. That was huge. It's a seven-point game, but underneath, instinctive move to find Cam Williams underneath and... So Williams will shoot two. And they need to be able to somehow slice this momentum that has come from behind the arc and at the free throw line. And Williams does not get the Plinko drop. Gets the second of the two. Williams with nine in the game to make it 55 to 47. But TRA looks like a team on a mission as they have suddenly come from 15 down. Big three. No, off to the left. But they get the follow shot in there. Elise Warren now in double figures with 11. It's down to a six-point lead, and they almost lose it. They are all over it on defense now, swarming to the ball. Open for the three. That's short, well short. And the rebound comes off to Riley Bowers. The rally is on for the Lady Rebels. It just seemed to be, oh, she got away with a slide on that one. And in between the defenders, it's good, and the foul. Elise Warren sends it home 
And it is a four-point game at 55 to 51. Cam Williams committing her fourth foul of the game. And it's now in, oh my goodness, she is down there and let's see if she can make it back up. She does. She's had some knee problems and big challenge now. Hughes and Williams both with four fouls and still almost seven minutes remaining for the Lady Knights. As this big rally has come, actually it started with that, it was a 14 point lead and then a, th a foul off of a three pointer right at the end of the third quarter and all three were connected by Raven Sims to cut it to an 11 point lead and now it is four and a chance at the line to knock it down to three. The big question is can Warren continue? And right now she can't so they're gonna send Sims to the line. So you can do this. It can be, you can have a designated shooter, too. And she is going to go back over to the training table at the opposite end of the court. And he's got to get a replacement into the game. And he's going to bring in Jackie Haler once again. So it's now Haler that is going to shoot the free throw. And it will be one. And going out is Cam Williams with her four fouls. And Haler right through the heart. Her first point of the game, but as it is right now, and she just came in for the express purpose of hitting that free throw. And now they're going to all court pressure to see if they can rattle Sacred Heart. Thought about the three and backed off of it. Blankenship wanted to, and she backed off. And they're going to have to play aggressively. It is Blankenship. No, it is short, but she gets the offensive board. And drawing the foul, yes. Basket and the foul. Now let's see, it looks as though he said no basket. The foul is charged to Ava Anderson, her first. So they did not give her the basket on that. But Hughes will at least try to compensate for that. And remember, she is playing with four fouls. And misses the second one. A chance to cut the lead to two or even one for the Lady Rebels as they built their own drama here with plenty of time left in the fourth quarter. Blankenship trying to work off the screen, but they've got it in the corner. No. And losing it out of bounds. Nice sportsmanship to help up Clement. But they're going to come back and try all court pressure once again, at least keeping three up front. But quickly down the floor, and that's one thing that you do with a press, is you try to take it all the way down and just knock some of the life out of that press, and that's 20 points for Hughes. So a big play to extend the lead back to six. The key for TRA at this point is just simply to continue the game that they have played that has been aggressive here in the last three and a half minutes. If that goes in, I, I'm absolutely coming out of the stands. I, and you've seen fluke shots like that that did go through. She was too far underneath. They thought about the three in the corner. That's tip, but Back into the hands, the one-hand floater, and she just really was not set, was Hughes. So trying to go all the way down, got the left-hand layup. Raven Sims, and timeout is called. Once again, we got a four-point game. 58-54, Sacred Heart still on top. Back with the final five minutes after this. 
Welcome to Man's Record Service. We offer a wide array of services. We are dedicated towing professionals experienced in both simple and complicated towing services. We offer light and heavy-duty off-road recovery, auto and heavy-duty towing, load shift and load transfer capabilities, and much more. We are equipped to handle any situation, no matter how big or how small. Call today at 731-424-2173. Sacred Heart fans, you looked as though this one was pretty much in the bag when your team was up by as many as 18 in the third quarter, and then a flurry was started when it was a 14-point lead and a foul off a three-point shot at the end of the third quarter, and all three sunk by Raven Sims, who's had herself a big second half. She's got 25 points in the game. No foul called on the backside of that shot by Eliza Johnson. They got a chance to cut this one down to potentially even one. Richardson trying to look for somebody open, and open in the wing is Ava Anderson. She has not attempted a long one here tonight. She does now. Too much on it, air ball. And scrambling to find some help, and that's a case of guarding too close. You gotta give the player an opportunity. And he's gonna come over in. So timeout is called by the Lady Knights. And so we will take another break with 421 remaining, enough four point lead continuing for Sacred Heart. 27 years ago, a vision became a reality and Snookum Steakhouse officially opened. We cut our steaks in-house and our ribeyes are full of flavor. The steak trimmings are used to make our certified Angus beef steak burgers, so when you order at Snookum's, you are getting high quality. Enjoy our salad bar and mini dessert. Also try our famous family recipe, the Pink Lush Fruit Salad. Come visit Snookum Steakhouse in Henderson, Tennessee. We are open evenings Tuesday through Saturday, but closed Sunday and Monday. Snookum Steakhouse, come taste the difference. Lady Rebels have been on a 14-4 run, and it is a jump ball. The pass went into the hands of Bree Green, but she was hammered, and alternate possession goes to the Lady Knights. And it just seems as though the air has somewhat gone out of the tire for Sacred Heart. Almost stolen. And it's there and the foul. Raven Sims, who has turned this into her own show in the second half. That's 28 points for her. And that is the fourth foul on Bree Green. And I'm telling you, they don't have a lot of players to spare. It is a one-point game. Sims with 29. And they're in the press. And the foul. Trying to get the steal was Clement, and that is her fourth foul. Every time she's called for a foul, she gets a smile on her face as if, well, you know, I thought I had a steal, but I didn't. So at the line is Hughes, it's a one and one. Got it, that was big. Malia Hughes has kept them in the lead. She has 21, 22. High drama coming down the final four minutes. Don't go anywhere, don't go to the refrigerator. It's not worth it. You need your blood pressure rising and this one will do it to you. Stutter step, dribble penetration, and they go to the outside, and that one's the air ball. Riley Bowers couldn't connect with it, and Bree Green with the rebound. Trying desperately to get the steal, but the foul, a little bit too aggressive, was Ava Anderson, and that is her second. But that now puts them in the two-shot bonus. 
Everybody is in the two-shot bonus now. Four fouls for Kayla Clement. For TRA, four fouls for Bree Green, Cam Williams, and Malia Hughes. And that one misses. That hurts if you are a Sacred Heart fan. Christian Holder with only a single basket in the game. And misses the second one. And she was already, that's a lane violation. She was already over the line before the ball hit the iron. Can't do that. Got a little bit too anxious to be able to nail home that rebound. Well, let's see how Coach Anderson plays it. They have a chance to tie it. And she dishes off, and it just delivers to Raven Sims. TRA calls timeout. Let's call timeout ourselves. One point lead for Sacred Heart. We'll be right back. This could be a true story. On October 3rd, a 2003 hatchback struck and killed a deer that goes by the name Buck. I know, right? He now has Buck's head proudly displayed on his living room wall. He tells a different story. He shot it. No, he didn't. And to hide his lie, he took his car to Mitchell's body shop. No, I didn't. Yes, he did. And lucky for him, they made it look good as new. And as for Buck, the story continues. Raven Sims with 31 points, 24 of them in the second half to lead this TRA team back. They have been on a 19 to six run since they were down by 14. Lady Knights getting a big hand as they return to the floor. And they're gonna go all court pressure once again to see if they can rattle Sacred Heart. She's got to hurry, and this is going to be a big bomb, and she's wide open. That, oh, my goodness, she was too close underneath, missed them both, and on the third one, had two offensive boards and goes to the line for two. Cam Williams was so wide open, and sometimes that is so difficult to be able to connect. That's the third foul on Raven Sims. Here's Williams. Got it. Williams with 10 in the game. Make it 11, and both of those were big. Three-point lead for the Lady Knights. But a barnstorming group from TRA trying to come back and tie it. They have not led except when they had the first basket of the game. Big three, too much on it from the corner. Richardson thought she had the range. They got the offensive board, almost stolen. Nice recovery, down to two and a half minutes remaining. Big three, no, off the iron. Scrambling for the rebound. Lady Knights keep it. Open for the three, Blankenship, yes! That basket had to take a second thought before it rolled around and went through. There's still plenty of time left, a six point margin, and we've had big drama in this fourth quarter. Two minutes remaining. They double team and going to the inside and drawing the foul. Going to the line will be Riley Bowers. And let's see who it's called on. Cam Williams, and that is her fifth. So she has to come out. So Williams is done, and Johnson comes out. Williams in the game tonight leaves with 11 points, but those two big free throws that she just had a moment ago were huge. Off the mark for Bowers. They really needed that one. She is one of three from the line. 
Short. Big, big miss. And trying to scramble it away, jump ball, and the alternate position will stay with the Lady Knights. Good job of hanging on to that by Blankenship. And we've got a myriad of substitutions coming through. Bowers is going to check out, and they've got Elise Warren back in the game. She's had problems with that knee in the second half. Now, the one thing they don't want to do is to get into too big of a hurry. And that one was a bad decision underneath. She didn't have the mark. She did not have the range and gave it up. That's what, and the foul is charged to Eliza Johnson. That is her third. That was what Coach David Niven of Union University would call a shot turnover. It's not technically a turnover on the sheet but it was just a poor decision of a shot to take that underneath. And frankly, they needed to scale some time off the clock. Short on the free throw. That's been a trouble spot tonight for TRA. A lot of missed opportunities from the free throw line. Clement misses the second one. And once again, frittering away a golden opportunity to slice this lead. And nobody home and miscommunication. She thought someone was down the floor and nobody was home. That is turnover number 10. And we've got timeout. We're going to keep it right here with 95 seconds remaining. 65 to 59. Sacred Heart has lost Cam Williams. She picked up 11 points tonight, but they are still dealing with Bree Green and Hughes with four. And they can ill afford to lose both of them down the stretch should this game go to overtime. Kayla Clement playing with four fouls for TRA. Raven Sims with three, but what a night Sims has had with 31 points. You just cannot say enough about what she has done and she's contributed a lot from the free throw line eight out of nine she's been their best percentage shooter but they have had a tough time otherwise so far in the game tonight they are 14 out of 25 56 percent let's see how they play it you don't have to have a three yet, but you have to have some urgency with which you are shooting because you are down two full possessions. And she had nowhere to go on the inside. They were double teaming her and through the middle and the foul. So they got to be able to connect from the line and the foul is charged to Eliza Johnson, her fourth. So this is getting to be critical quarters now for Sacred Heart in the foul category, which is why they got to hope they can win it in, in, in regulation. High arcing basket goes through for Ava Anderson. That's only her third point of the game, but that was important. Checking back in is Riley Bowers. Actually, Bowers is checking out, and they brought back in Kayla Clement. Second one short. Good rebound for Johnson. And this is where you have to wonder, are you going to try to go ahead and try to foul them? And timeout is called. 67 seconds remaining. 65-60. Sacred Heart on top back in 30 seconds. Men, there's a new salon in Jackson, Race Clips, on South Highland, next door to Roland Safety and Supply. Whether it's a quick trim or a new look, Race Clips stylists can transform you to perfection. At Race Clips, you'll find all the products to keep you looking your best. Active duty military, veterans, and law enforcement officers receive a discount. Open Monday through Friday from 9 to 6, 9 to 3 on Saturday. Race Clips on South Highland, Jackson. Go to race-clips.com. Well, 
the big question now is can Sacred Heart gut it out and hold on for what has been a nerve-wracking victory if they do hold on? And it is their ball in the corner. 67 seconds remaining. We'll see if they try to skate some time off of this clock. Instead, they go right to a floater, and it's in and out. And here they go on a mission, going for the big bomb, three, and it's off to the right. And off the fingertips of Bauer. She tried desperately to save that one, could not. And they lost 16 seconds of opportunity by not being able to convert. Blankenship, and they're going to try to see if they can scatter it around. Yep, it's almost like a four-corner situation that you used to see in North Carolina basketball, and that foul will send Hughes to the line. The foul. We're trying to catch it, and it is on Riley Bowers, her third. And it's Hughes who's playing with four fouls. Missed that first opportunity. You have to wonder what goes through these young ladies' minds on both ends of the floor, trying hard to hold on and save a victory, and that was a big one, to make it a full two-possession lead again at 66-60. And if you're TRA, and TRA is going to take, now let's see what the discussion is. There, there, it may have been something to do with the clock. I don't know. Anyway, it's going back to TRA. This is where they have to have urgency, going for the three. Off the back of the iron. Bauer scrambling. Gets it. Bowers with only her third point of the game to make it 66-62. 22 seconds remain. We're going to keep it right here. Let me run through this. Blankenship with 18 points, all of them three-pointers for Sacred Heart. Malia Hughes, and I'm trying to do the math as I go along, 23 points. Cam Williams is out of the game with 11. And you have Williams fouled out and also four fouls each on Johnson, Green, and Hughes. Raven Sims, 31 points, the game leader for TRA. She has half of her team's total. Elise Warren with 13. They're the two in double figures. But they are going to have to have a steal at this point of some kind. Almost did it. Only about four-tenths of a second went off the clock. That was a great opportunity by Raven Sims. Now, Ravens only hit one three-pointer in the game. But if you don't get in this situation now with 22 seconds remaining, if you don't get a steal, you pretty much have to foul. And almost got her out of bounds. They're going to have to go for the foul. But instead, they go for the shot in and out. They've still got an opportunity, but they've got to hurry and take it all the way. And the left-hand layup is there. Timeout called. Raven Sims, 33 points, but less than five seconds remain. Now, just think about this. You get a steal in a case like this. There is no way, if they get the ball down the floor, there's just no way that TRA is going to be able to come back and pull this upset. TRA got the first basket of this game, and then all of a sudden there were two three-pointers on the part of Sacred Heart, and TRA never has led since. But Raven Sims has put on a show 26 of her 33 points in the second half. And I, I must tell you, it was 54-40 when that foul was committed right at the end of a three-point shot as time ran out in the third quarter, and Raven Sims knocked home all three free throws to cut the lead to 11, and that is what really stirred this monumental comeback. And they put 21 on the board in the fourth quarter. 
if they get it in bounds, you almost have to have a quick foul. So let's see how Coach Dotson plays this one. They're scrambling. Somebody's got to get open. Almost stolen. Still 4.2 seconds remaining. Don't hold your breath, folks, because <laughs> I've seen things that have been bizarre happen in situations like this way too many times. And timeout call. The ball was going in bounds, and Coach Dotson chose to call a timeout. We will again keep it right here at this late point. Coach called a timeout just as she was lobbing the ball inbounds. The person that you really want to try to get the ball in the hands of, you really want to get it in the hands of Hughes or of Blankenship because those two are really outstanding ball handlers. And the best thing that you want to do is to get it into somebody's hands that's at least five feet away from the end line so that if they get fouled, okay, you take it down to the end of the floor and the odds are you're gonna be a little bit less than three seconds if they foul immediately and it would be an almost impossibility. You'd have to have a miracle shot, the equivalent of a Hail Mary in football. All right, once again, now this time they're gonna play it from the corner. Let's see if that affects the strategy. And they do get it. They got a foul, and they do with 2.6 seconds remaining. And it was a trip. Let's see if they charge it to Clement. And Hughes went down hard. Yeah, Clement is gone. That's her fifth foul, but that was all she could do. <laughs> Kayla Clement leaves the game with a single three-pointer, but she had no choice, really, but to try to do anything she could to commit that foul. If Malia Hughes gets one, the worst thing that could happen would be a miracle overtime for TRA. Gets them both, it's over. Got it. That was big. This one will salt it away. And she got it. Game, set, match. Big three that was right there on the glass. Sacred Heart survives 68 to 64. And I have to tell you, that was one of these that was, it really shouldn't have been based on the first three quarters, but was definitely in doubt right up there until those final two free throws that Malia Hughes navigated home as Sacred Heart survives a real tooth puller, 68 to 64. Let me give you the final totals before we take a break. It was Malia Hughes, and I'm gonna run down her totals, try to manually calculate this. She ended up with those last two free throws with 25 points to lead Sacred Heart, 18 points in the game for Jasmine Blankenship and 11 for Cam Williams. They were the three in double figures. Over for TRA, what a night it was for Raven Sims with 33 points and she almost brought them from behind. And she was the game leader. And Elise Warren, uh, she was one that she continued to try to plug away late in the game. She ended up with 13 points, and she was the other one in double figures. But on the winning note, we will give our player of the game to Malia Hughes, 25 points, and particularly with those free throws at the end, she was six of seven in the game, add to that three three-pointers, and survived it with four fouls down the stretch. So Sacred Art wins it 68 to 64, but not without a huge struggle in the final eight minutes. We're gonna take an extended break right here and we'll come back with about two minutes before we start this boys half of the doubleheader between Sacred Heart and TRA. So everybody take a break. 
watch these commercials and be sure to go by and tell our fine sponsors that you enjoyed seeing the game here on Sacred Heart Athletics and on Worthy Road Studios. We'll be back in about six minutes. At Lonnie Kyle Ford, we now give you a warranty for life on the engine and transmission. That's right, a warranty for life at no cost to you. Unlimited time, unlimited mileage, but it's only at Lonnie Kyle Ford in Henderson, where cars really are cheaper in the country. Downtown is thriving and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the path from the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio. Eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. Football looks fun. I bet I would have been great at it. The first football playing deer, they would have made a movie about me and everything. Probably get Kurt Russell to play me. But alas, me and my dreams run right over again. For fast, reliable collision repair, trust the experts at Mitchell's Body Shop. And get back out there. Hey, if you're looking for something different, come to Lou's Crawfish for curbside pickup. Hey, if you're looking for something different, come to Lou's Crawfish for curbside pickup. Hey, if you're looking for something different, come to Lou's Crawfish for curbside pickup. Hello folks, this is Gary Deaton, right here at Deaton's Carpet One. I want to let you know we've been in business for 48 years. Here's what I believe has made the difference. Our lifetime labor warrant on everything we install. Our healthy living installation, bacteria and germs cannot survive in our new flooring. Our beautiful guarantee, if you don't just love it, we'll replace it. It will make your flooring experience priceless. We're located on Freedom Highway, 1000 Highway 45 Bypass in good old Jackson, Tennessee. Are you looking for an academically rich and nurturing environment that teaches Christian values to your children? St. Mary's has an accredited curriculum for kindergarten through eighth grade with extracurricular activities, fine arts, and athletics. We also offer pre-K classes for two, three, and four-year-olds. St. Mary's provides students a well-rounded experience in a loving environment, and children of all faiths are welcome. If you want to learn more about why families have been choosing St. Mary's since 1878, then call us or visit our website. Downtown is thriving and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. Buying a car is all about you. In person, over the phone, or online, we make it simple and easy. Our place is yours no matter where you live. LonnieCobbFord.com or Lonnie Cobb Ford in Henderson, where cars really are cheaper in the country. Welcome to Man's Record Service. We offer a wide array of services. We are dedicated towing professionals experienced in both simple and complicated towing services. We offer light and heavy-duty off-road recovery, auto and heavy-duty towing, load shift and load transfer capabilities, and much more. We are equipped to handle any situation, no matter how big or how small. Call today at 731-424-2173. 27 years ago, a vision became a reality and Snookum Steakhouse officially opened. We cut our steaks in-house and our ribeyes are full of flavor. The steak trimmings are used to make our certified Angus Beef Steak Burgers, so when you order at Snookum's, you are getting high quality. Enjoy our salad bar and mini dessert. Also try our famous family recipe, the Pink Lush Fruit Salad. Come visit Snookum Steakhouse in Henderson, Tennessee. We are open evenings Tuesday through Saturday, but close Sunday to Monday. Snookum Steakhouse, come taste the difference. This could be a true story. On October 3rd, a 2003 hatchback struck and killed a deer that goes by the name Buck. I know, right? He now has Buck's head proudly displayed on his living room wall. He tells a different story. He shot it. No, he didn't. And to hide his lie, he took his car to Mitchell's Body Shop. No, I didn't. Yes, he did. Oh. And lucky for him, they made it look good as new. And as for Buck, the story continues. 
Men, there's a new salon in Jackson, Race Clips, on South Highland, next door to Roland Safety and Supply. Whether it's a quick trim or a new look, Race Clips stylists can transform you to perfection. At Race Clips, you'll find all the products to keep you looking your best. Active duty military, veterans, and law enforcement officers receive a discount. Open Monday through Friday from 9 to 6, 9 to 3 on Saturday. Race Clips on South Highland, Jackson. Go to race-clips.com. At Lonnie Kyle Ford, we now give you a warranty for life on the engine and transmission. That's right, a warranty for life at no cost to you. Unlimited time, unlimited mileage, but it's only at Lonnie Kyle Ford in Henderson, where cars really are cheaper in the country. Downtown is thriving, and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack, from the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio. Eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. Football looks fun. I bet I would have been great at it. The first football playing deer, they would have made a movie about me and everything. Probably get Kurt Russell to play me. But alas, me and my dreams run right over again. For fast, reliable collision repair, trust the experts at Mitchell's Body Shop. And get back out there. women's game was one in which you it was like being on the edge of a cliff and you just didn't fall off as Sacred Heart had as much as an 18 point lead and had to hang on to win it 68 to 64 over TRA now let's get the guys onto the floor as Sacred Heart and TRA get ready to teal it up between the Knights and the Rebels for TRA your starters are going to be Tyler Bird Alex Blue, Thano Sims, Sam Cannon, and Eli Ramsey. And you'll be hearing other names such as Sean Taylor, Luke Grigsby, Jay Brown, Waylon Pickett during the course of the game. For Sacred Art, Xander Taylor. And the last time I was here to call one, he had himself a fabulous night. Trey Truel, Malachi Chavis, A.J. Mormon. He can pull up and fire from outside and Jake Kale, and you'll be hearing a lot of other names during the course of the game tonight, but those are going to be your starters. And this Sacred Heart team is one. They do a lot of screening to get open for three-point shots, and you're going to be seeing a lot of them go up tonight. It's not that they can't play in the paint, but they will absolutely drive you batty going for threes, and if they start getting into a rhythm, uh, you begin to really understand how strong those players are. And, and let's go down for the introduction of the starters.
I got to tell you, Sacred Heart has one inspirational public address announcer, and she does it the way you do in high school and many colleges, is that when it's the visiting team, you say it with almost a casual thing, such as with TRA, number two, Tyler Bird, number three, Alex Blue, <laughs> and then it's number zero, Xander Taylor. She has got, she's got the act down right. We're right set to go here from David Hunt Court and let the games begin as the Rebels get the tip. This team aggressively attacks the basket and they will go after the glass. And going for the three right off the bat, off the iron. AJ tried to get that one off the, off the top but just off the back of the iron. This is my first opportunity to see this TRA team, and we'll see what right now they're giving up some height, except right at the post underneath with Eli Ramsey. They thought about the three from the corner and the foul. That will send Tyler Bird to the line. The foul is on Jake Kale. That is his first and the first one of the entire game. Sacred Heart going with three seniors in the starting lineup. And they said it was not in the act of shooting, so he doesn't go for two. The floater, and it's the offensive foul. Kale drew it. Alex Blue committed the foul. Kale had the perfect position on him. And this is a, a Sacred Heart team that, just like that. It doesn't matter if they miss that first one. High up for the rebound, though, is Tyler Bird. They'll keep shooting from outside because they just have total confidence that it's going to fall. Underneath a scramble and give it to the Knights. So nobody scored in the first minute, but that doesn't mean that the play, and you, you're probably going to see a lot of physical play in this game tonight. They spread them out to get away from that half-court pressure. Boy, it's like almost like a boxing one, the way they're trying to defend Trey Troll. But they get it. So there you go. I told you they would continue to do it until they finally made one drop, and indeed they did. From the corner, the three is not there, and scrambling for that rebound is Troll, and you got the foul. He actually had it knocked away from him. They quickly got Andre Bell into the game. And let's see how they play it. And again, just playing discipline with their offense and going to the inside. That one was off the mark, and the rebound comes off to Thano Sims. And you talk about physical on the inside, and they had to do that to be able to stop him, and Trey is called for the foul. Instead, they charge it to Xander Taylor. Both he and Trey Troll were underneath. At the line for two is Tyler Bird. <laughs> A, uh, an extreme editorial comment coming from the crowd. I'm not sure who they said didn't like somebody, but... <laughs> And you've got a, an intense student section from Sacred Heart who is here over in the student section below us. Blue connecting both free throws. Again, strong man-to-man -man defense, but they are really boxing in the center. Jumper is there. Malachi Chavis makes it a 5-2 game. Trying the answer shot, yes sir. Alex Blue ties it at five. 
I think you're going to see a strong offensive game by both of these teams. And that was after, that was one of those that was the accidental bump in Sam Cannon. That's one of those fouls that you just absolutely cringe when it happens, but it was as he released that, whoa, they say it is not going to be a three-point shot, or are they? Well, he had released the ball. I guess they said that he fouled him after the shot, so they did not give him a three-point opportunity. And you got a palming violation called. So there's your first turnover of the game. Well, that was a bang-bang play over in the corner, and to be candid with you, I thought that was going to be a three-shot foul, but they said no. They said he bumped into him after the shot, so TRA really dodged one. And that one's going to be an over and back. There was just no way that they could salvage that one. Alex Blue trying to cover it to keep from a cheap basket. Each team committing a turnover, and checking in now is Dylan Butler for TRA, and coming out is Cannon. And a steal. That pass just didn't have enough authority on it. And the foul. The fans are really going to get into this one tonight. I have every reason to believe. That is the third team foul already, and that one is on Andre Bell. Got a low center of gravity on Alex Blue. But he could penetrate and go right to the center. Going for the bomb. Short. Control with the rebound. And again, this is a good passing team. Almost a foul on that. Dangerous passes they will do at times. And on the inside, forcing that one home, Malachi Chavis. 7-5 lead for the Knights. Bird slows it down. Getting a little more deliberate. Dylan Butler is another one who will pull up and shoot a three, but this time the three goes off the mark for Blue. And the rebound and the foul, oh, they call travel. He was trying to release the ball, was A.J. Mormon, and he went down, but the official said that it was a travel, that he did not release the ball before his motion actually caused the traveling violation. They're going to spread out their offense at this point, but in the middle, going all the way down for the stuff. Tyler Bird, and we're tied at seven. And a steal once again. Here's Bird, they got three on two. Bird's gonna take it all the way and get it. Five turnovers already for Sacred Heart. And timeout is taken as the first lead is in the hands of TRA 9-7 back after this message. Hey, if you're looking for something different, come to Lou's Crawfish for curbside pickup. Hey, if you're looking for something different, come to Lou's Crawfish for curbside pickup. Hey, if you're looking for something different, come to Lou's Crawfish for curbside pickup. This has been a rapid fire first quarter. First lead of the night for the Rebels at nine to seven. Open for the three, no. Short off the mark for Andre Bell. And you can see how fast this TRA team is. That one was off the mark, but getting the offensive board. What a block by Malachi Chavis. He just demanded it. Screen for the three, short. Out of bounds off of the fingertips of A.J. Mormon. And checking in now, Sam Cannon is back into the contest. Got about three minutes remaining, but this has been an exciting first quarter just because of the speed of both of these teams and aggressiveness. Open for the three, great passing, but it's short by Cannon. 
but they get the follow shot on the backside. Give it to Thano Sims. An 11-7 lead. Back door, layup is there. Excellent assist, and Troll gets his first one. Make it an 11-9 game. Sacred Heart badly needs to cut down on the turnovers. Five already in this first quarter. They slow the tempo down, but this guy can do about a double spin move, and he went about a 180, and the follow was there for Tyler Bird. Bird with six of the 13 points. The three is off the mark, but the follow shot is there. Excellent concentration for Malachi Chavis with the offensive rebound. And you can hear the crowd picking up the intensity. Friday night at David Hunt Court can get absolutely electrifying. Remember, no shot clock in high school basketball, so they can hold on to this as long as they want. Down to about a minute and a half to go in this first quarter. And again, they slow it up. It's good defense on the part of Sacred Heart. They're looking for that one screen that they could potentially get somebody open underneath. Cannon tried to connect and lost it. And here he go, trying to go, and down the stretch he goes, and it was off the mark. Just too far underneath was Trey Truel, and back on the backside, it is Bird with the exclamation point. So that's a four-point turnaround. Three was off the mark. You could see he pushed it. Xander Taylor just a little bit too far right. That is what you call a shot turnover. It doesn't count in the book as a turnover, but it's a shot that possibly, if he had it to do over again, even though he had a good look, there was nobody around to rebound. So, well, he's just going to basically stand around Bird and hold on to it. And he's calling for the crowd to get into it. His fans are... And they're going to hold it for the final shot because Sacred Heart is obviously not going to come out and challenge them. Now they work it. Open, but no three. From the corner, off the mark. Sacred Heart has one opportunity. Underneath, yo, no. Chavis had it there, and the three is there. And Eli Ramsey has electrified his crowd. And that ends the first quarter on a big, big note. And your score, 18 to 11, TRA on top. Back with the second quarter in a moment. Hello, folks. This is Gary Deaton right here at Deaton's Carpet One. I want to let you know we've been in business for 48 years. Here's what I believe has made the difference. Our lifetime labor wants on everything we install. Our healthy living installation, bacteria and germs cannot survive in our new flooring. Our beautiful guarantee, if you don't just love it, we'll replace it. It will make your flooring experience priceless. We're located on Freedom Highway, 1000 Highway 45 Bypass in good old Jackson, Tennessee. Talk about changing emotion. They had the lob pass inside for a potential stuff by Malachi Chavis. And he just dumped too hard. And the rebound came off in a big three right at the horn by Eli Ramsey. What could have been a 15-13 game became an 18-11 and a seven-point lead. And the Rebels get first possession in the second quarter. This place is going to be rocking, so hold on to your hats. Big 28-foot three-pointer, not there, and here you go. Troll is on the bicycle, and an offensive foul. Just could not control his momentum, and Troll commits his first of the game. And for Sacred Heart, that is turnover number six. Not a good situation in coughing up the basketball. 
Sacred Heart girls won 68 to 64, traveling. Taking a step before he went down with it. So the violation is charged to Luke Grigsby. Third turnover for TRA. Oh, that was an interesting dish off, and the three is in and out. Taylor had the range, but the iron would not hold it. So this is going about like the first minute of the first quarter was, in which I, it looked like we weren't going to get a score. And boy, did the action pick up. This is Blue. He has a floater right through, a nine-point lead. Blue has seven. And Sacred Heart, after getting the early lead, has now fallen behind by three possessions and can't get the answer shot on the backside by Taylor. Bird the rebound. And let's see how they play it, because we've seen them go both ways, and they're going to go for the three. Too much on it. And headed down is Bell. Taylor wants to work the inside, and he will draw the foul, but it will not be a shooting foul. Sam Cannon commits. That is the team's third foul in this first half. And checking back into the game is Waylon Pickett for TRA. And a steal. Well, couldn't control it. Thano Sims was right on it, trying to get in force what would have been the seventh turnover of this first half against Sacred Heart. They're double teaming the basketball all over the floor. This is a very fast team on defense. And again, the three-pointer by Taylor will not fall. Xander's had four opportunities at it from behind the arc, and they're just not dropping so far tonight. And let's see how they play it. Again, staying man-to-man. -man. Jumper is off the mark by Blue. And give it back to Sacred Heart. And checking in for the Knights is A.J. Mormon once again, one of the starters, and checking out Andre Bell. And Sacred Heart just has to find a way to begin to get a bit of a flurry. You can't go through this with just shooting all threes if you get an open one, but they're going to go for the three, and it's there. Jake Kale with the three to make it a 20-14 to 14 game. That was big. My reason for saying that is just, you know, play your offense and go for whichever open shot that you have, and if you get a lot of twos, that fi that's fine as long as you can make stops. On the inside, they go to pick it. Again, they're working it around the perimeter, but they're always looking for that open player to break in the paint. And that's going to be an over and back. Nope. No, it's not an over and back because it was tipped by Sacred Heart. And Bird on the inside could not get it to fall. And on that rebound, the foul... Kale dominated the board there, and let's see who they call this one on. It's on Sean Taylor. That's the fourth team foul so far on TRA. Cannon has two fouls. Oh, my goodness. And he was open. Troll was open underneath and just simply lost sight of the ball. Turnover number seven for Sacred Heart. And those are the kind that just really curl your hair. And they're going in the corner with it once again. They've somewhat quieted the crowd from Sacred Heart that was really into it for the early part of the first quarter. 
And right through the defenders and the foul. Crowd didn't like it, but that's exactly what you get because he had position. Jake Kale is charged with a foul. That is his second. So Tyler Bird is already in double figures with 10. And connects. He's got 11 of the 23 points of TRA. Nice fake and dribble in the inside. The bank shot does not go for Taylor. They're not getting many offensive rebounds because this team aggressively goes for the glass offensive foul. Yeah. Kale with position, and he's very good at drawing that kind of foul. That's the sixth team foul, and it is the second one. That's the first one, pardon me, on Tyler Bird. So this is a big one to try to pick something up off the turnover. Yeah, right open underneath. Get it into Chavis. That's what you need to do. That's the first points they picked up off a turnover. 23 to 16 game. And they needed that one to try to open up some space as we approach the three and a half minute mark in this first half. Almost knocked away by Malachi Chavis. High arcing three is off the iron, and here they go on the bicycle. It's two on one. They'll never catch him. Down the stretch he goes. True with a big one, 23 to 18, as they've cut it to a two possession lead. And the floater is off the mark for Alex Blue. And they got numbers again. It's four on three. Got to back out because they catch up on defense. Almost stolen, and it is. That was too dangerous a cross court pass by Taylor. And overshooting it, and the tip does not go. Let's see if they can capitalize off this one. Going for the bomb. Yes! Mormon got the beautiful roll on that one, got a Plinko drop. And now they have gone on a 7 0 run to make it 23 to 21. That's going to be interesting to see is. TRA going to just try to hold it up here until they come out and challenge them. And that was going to be an over and back. There was no knock away that time. That is the fifth turnover for TRA, and this could lead to a tie once again. So they get a couple of substitutions back into the game. And it's Kale to toss it in. So it's been a very patient rally over the last two and a half minutes. Going for the bomb. No, off the back of the iron. Lots of rebounds here in this first half. In fact, six of them for Tyler Bird. They're under two minutes. So they're going to take their time. They're not going to try to aggressively attack this unless Sacred Heart comes out to challenge him. And Sacred Heart's being very patient on defense. And again, they've, they've skated about probably 25 seconds off the clock on this possession. <laughs> Dribble penetration in the middle, and it's off to the right. Knocked away and give it to Sacred Heart. Blue had a good look at the basket, and it went right. So with 88 seconds to go in the first half, Sacred Heart has an opportunity once again for the second time to tie it. And let's see how they play it. Big three off the back of the iron. Troll had the range, but it just would not drop. And once again, let's see if he slows it up. Getting down to the one minute mark. Thinking about the three was Grigsby. And again, they're content to wait on the open shot off a screen, and they may have had it right there, and the block, but they're going to call a foul. They say they got him on the wrist. 
And that was a good aggressive move for Eli Ramsey to go and aggressively take it inside. The foul is charged to Truel, and that is his second. Ramsey for two, gets it. He's got four in the game. Game's leading scorer is Tyler Bird with the 11. Alex Blue with the seven. Braden Dancy checks in for the first time for the Knights. Got a good form. Somewhat of a left-hander is Ramsey, and that makes it a four-point lead once again. Oh, almost too high, but saving it greatly was Chavis and the foul. In an attempt to try to steal it away, the foul was committed. That's on Sean Taylor, his second. Each team has committed six fouls, so nobody is in the bonus. Ah, perilous, and it finally does go away, and Sacred Heart picks it back up. Don't charge that as a turnover to anybody because there wasn't a complete clean possession. Under a half minute. Yep, that one was short. You could tell the minute Taylor let it go. He's missed five of them tonight. Some nights you just have them where they won't drop. Union University's men had one last night, and there's the offensive foul. And that is turnover number six for TRA. Now somebody's got to come to the ball, and they finally do. We'll see if they play it for the final possession here. Again, very crisp passing, but they've just made eight turnovers in the game. Big three. Nope, too far left. And that's the end of the first half. He had a good look at it again, but this is a night where the threes are just not dropping with a lot of authority. They are three of 13 in this first half. And so the second quarter, though, give that to Sacred Heart because they held this TRA team down to three points. It was 18 to 11 at the end of the first quarter, and now at halftime, 25 to 21. So uh, you got to hand it to them. They did a terrific job defensively on this in the second quarter. And we're going to take about a six-minute break. And then when we come back, I'll give you all of the halftime totals, and we'll pick up as to what to expect in the second half of play. Don't go anywhere. Are you looking for an academically rich and nurturing environment that teaches Christian values to your children? St. Mary's has an accredited curriculum for kindergarten through eighth grade with extracurricular activities, fine arts, and athletics. We also offer pre-K classes for two, three, and four-year-olds. St. Mary's provides students a well-rounded experience in a loving environment, and children of all faiths are welcome. If you want to learn more about why families have been choosing St. Mary's since 1878, then call us or visit our website. Downtown is thriving and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. Buying a car is all about you. In person, over the phone, or online, we make it simple and easy. Our place is yours no matter where you live. LonnieCobbFord.com or Lonnie Cobb Ford in Henderson, where cars really are cheaper in the country. Welcome to Man's Record Service. We offer a wide array of services. We are dedicated towing professionals, experienced in both simple and complicated towing services. We offer light and heavy-duty off-road recovery, auto and heavy-duty towing, load shift and load transfer capabilities, and much more. We are equipped to handle any situation, no matter how big or how small. Call today at 731-424-2173. 27 years ago, a vision became a reality and Snookum Steakhouse officially opened. We cut our steaks in-house and our ribeyes are full of flavor. The steak trimmings are used to make our certified Angus Beef Steak Burgers, so when you order at Snookum's, you are getting high quality. Enjoy our salad bar and mini dessert. Also try our famous family recipe, the Pink Lush Fruit Salad. Come visit Snookum Steakhouse in Henderson, Tennessee. We are open evenings Tuesday through Saturday, but closed Sunday and Monday. Snookum Steakhouse. 
Come taste the difference. This could be a true story. On October 3rd, a 2003 hatchback struck and killed a deer that goes by the name Buck. I know, right? He now has Buck's head proudly displayed on his living room wall. He tells a different story. Shot it. No, he didn't. And to hide his lie, he took his car to Mitchell's body shop. No, I didn't. Yes, he did. And lucky for him, they made it look good as new. And as for Buck, the story continues. Men, there's a new salon in Jackson Race Clips on South Highland next door to Roland Safety and Supply. Whether it's a quick trim or a new look, Race Clips stylists can transform you to perfection. At Race Clips, you'll find all the products to keep you looking your best. Active duty military, veterans, and law enforcement officers receive a discount. Open Monday through Friday from 9 to 6, 9 to 3 on Saturday. Race Clips on South Highland, Jackson. Go to race-clips.com. At Lonnie Kyle Ford, we now give you a warranty for life on the engine and transmission. That's right, a warranty for life at no cost to you. Unlimited time, unlimited mileage, but it's only at Lonnie Kyle Ford in Henderson, where cars really are cheaper in the country. Downtown is thriving, and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. Football looks fun. I bet I would have been great at it. The first football playing deer, they would have made a movie about me and everything. Probably get Kurt Russell to play me. But alas, me and my dreams run right over again. For fast, reliable collision repair, trust the experts at Mitchell's Body Shop. And get back out there. Hey, if you're looking for something different, come to Lou's Crawfish for curbside pickup. Hey, if you're looking for something different, come to Lou's Crawfish for curbside pickup. Hey, if you're looking for something different, come to Lou's Crawfish for curbside pickup. Hello folks, this is Gary Dean, right here at Dean's Carpet One. I want to let you know we've been in business for 48 years. Here's what I believe has made the difference. Our lifetime labor warranty on everything we install. Our healthy living installation, bacteria and germs cannot survive in our new flooring. Our beautiful guarantee, if you don't just love it, we'll replace it. It will make your flooring experience priceless. We're located on Freedom Highway, 1000 Highway 45 Bypass in good old Jackson, Tennessee. Are you looking for an academically rich and nurturing environment that teaches Christian values to your children? St. Mary's has an accredited curriculum for kindergarten through eighth grade with extracurricular activities, fine arts, and athletics. We also offer pre-K classes for two, three, and four-year-olds. St. Mary's provides students a well-rounded experience in a loving environment, and children of all faiths are welcome. If you want to learn more about why families have been choosing St. Mary's since 1878, then call us or visit our website. Downtown is thriving and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. Buying a car is all about you. In person, over the phone, or online, we make it simple and easy. Our place is yours no matter where you live. LonnieCobbFord.com or Lonnie Cobb Ford in Henderson, where cars really are cheaper in the country. Back here to David Hunt Court live as TRA leads Sacred Heart 25 to 21. Let's run down the scoring here at halftime. We're about three minutes away from the tip-off of the second half. For TRA, it has been Tyler Bird with 11 points. All of them have been inside the paint except for a single free throw. Alex Blue with seven and five for Eli Ramsey, two for Tano Sims. Bird has also picked up six rebounds in the game. For Sacred Heart, it's Malachi Chavis with eight. He had another one that was just an instant dunk. It looked like a Sports Center highlight and just crashed it too hard, and it went out, and then it went back down the other way for a three-pointer for TRA. 
And then the rest of the scoring has been pretty well balanced, but nobody has really exploded. Trey Truel with four. A.J. Mormon, Andre Bell, Jake Kale each with three. And those are the only three pointers that Sacred Heart has had. Three out of 13 in the first half from behind the arc. If they can get that percentage up in the second half, uh, this thing could be one of these like the women's game going right down to the wire. Uh, on the other half of that one, you've only had two three-pointers for the evening for TRA, one by Alex Blue and one by Eli Ramsey. Let's take a look at the foul situation because that's always important. For TRA, Sam Cannon, who hasn't scored, has two, and Sean Taylor, who hasn't scored, has two. For Sacred Heart, Trey Truel with two. You've got to be careful with him, and Jake Kale with two. So those are the kind of things that you got to look for in the second half as we are about a minute away from getting them up again. And alternate possession is going to go to Sacred Heart to start the second half. In case you joined us late, Sacred Heart girls were up 18 points in the third quarter. And then you had a monumental rush by TRA that cut that lead down it was amazing how it was at one point down to a one-point game at 60 to 59. But the Lady Knights hanging on 68 to 64 over TRA in a game that looked for about three quarters as if this was just going to be a coast job. And that furious rally in the fourth quarter by TRA, they almost came all the way back, but they were just too far behind. It was too big of a mountain for them to come from behind. Although they did have three opportunities in the fourth quarter late to potentially tie the game. So I know that the Lady Knights are very happy to have gotten away with one tonight. And we're just about ready to start this second half. And it's going to be interesting. If we have one that is about as big a thriller as that women's game, uh, just go make sure you get whatever tablets that you have that you have to take to keep your blood pressure down. And the officials have signaled them to get back on the court. they got to find a way to stop. Uh, Sacred Heart has to find a way to stop Tyler Bird in this one because he's gotten too many points on the inside. And... That inside game has really throttled them. So the Knights will toss it in. It'll be Jake Kale, the senior. Now they've got the original five out there. Taylor, Truel, Chavis, Mormon, and Kale. And you can hear the crowd picking it up. That three was right there, but they got the offensive board. Off the mark and give it back for a third opportunity for the Knights. They've done a good job of trying to crash the offensive glass in this game, and they've had some second chance opportunities, but this has been a tight inside defense, almost stolen. And oh, just too much on that attempt. And the three is not there. This is a sixth opportunity to score and the foul. Finally going to send Malachi Chavis to the line. No, they say it goes the other way. So forget that. They had five opportunities to hit. So that's a big break. And steal. Here you go. And the foul is going to be charged probably to Cannon. And if it is, that's his third. And it is, so Cannon has committed his third. And they work it around the perimeter again, and they tried just no authority on that pass by Kale. And right through everybody, and he got too cute with trying to curl that layup in, did Bird. And you've had somewhat of a Keystone Cop start to this period, and the three is too strong. Rebound comes off again to the Rebels, and it's going to be a it's going to be a player control foul. So there's no shot coming. That's the second foul on Xander Taylor. 
up and down the floor. It has been by both teams three times. And you got three seconds called. That is the sixth turnover of the game for TRA. Knights have committed eight. And let's see if Sacred Heart can capitalize off that turnover. They've had their looks here in the first minute of the third quarter, but nothing has dropped, and there's a steal. Just took his eye off of it, and all the way down, Tyler Bird with 13, and it's off the turnover. That's their sixth point off of a mistake. But the three answer shot, they'll take three for two, and A.J. Mormon with his second three of the game to close the gap to three. Chance of defense coming over from the student section of Sacred Heart. And the turnaround is not there by Bird. And the follow does not drop by Butler. And the bank doesn't go. They had three opportunities, and they're going to give it back. They say it went off the fingertips of A.J. Mormon. They will have now a fourth opportunity as a basket. You just can't afford to continue to give them that many offensive rebounds. The matchups are good, but you just cannot continue to allow them to get those third and fourth opportunities. As we're down to the six-minute mark, and the layup is short. And the foul on the backside. Bird, I mean, you can't say enough about what he has been doing in the game. He's got eight rebounds, and three of them are offensive boards. The foul is charged to Jake Kale, and that is his third. Short. So Bird with 13 in the game and eight rebounds, but was not able to capitalize off of that one. They need this one. Got it. Bird is... Two out of three from the line so far. From the corner. That one's there. Trey Troll with his first three of the game. We got a one-point game here. This is not going to be one who have, this is not going to be a game for somebody, and let's see, yep. This is one of those, it's an offensive foul that was charged to Tyler Bird. That is his second. This one is not for the faint of heart tonight. And they're going to give them all court pressure. Open for the three. Yes! Xander Taylor, who had missed five of them until that point, picks it up. And Sacred Heart back to the lead, 30 to 28, and the bank does not go, and the foul is going to be charged to Sacred Heart. And that is the fourth on Jake Kale. He's going to have to come out. Yep, they're going to bring in Trey Troll, who had just, no, nope, instead of Troll, because he had just come off to the bench. They're going to bring in Braden Dancy. Now, that was a gamble to keep him in there with three fouls, and unfortunately, as aggressive as he is, you're going to have those kind of things happen. And that one goes through. Dancy comes in. Also, double substitutions come in for TRA. Sean Taylor going for his second. In and out. High for the rebound was Chavis. Taking care of the basketball is so important here. Almost stolen. Those cross-court passes have been so perilous tonight because of those outstretched hands of the Rebel defenders. And he's going to take it all the way down the middle, and it goes off the back of the iron, and they scramble. And knocked it away, and it goes back, and that's a turnover. 
That is now the ninth turnover for TRA. So Sacred Heart with a big break there. Let's see how they work this inbounds play. Well, it, that was a carom, and it goes right through for Malachi Chavis, who's in double figures with 10. And they have now picked up seven points off of TRA turnovers. Good defense on the part of Chavis. Giving blue fits, not letting him get an opening down the lane. Almost halfway through this third quarter. Almost a travel, and the fans wanted it. They did not get it. Didn't quite extend the pivot foot. And going for the three. Yes, sir. Dono Sims, he's got five, and we are tied. Wide open for the three. No. Eyes in that rim that time. Xander Taylor had it all to himself, and it just would not drop. He's having the kind of night tonight from three-point land. And there you go. The fallaway three is there. Alex Blue in double figures, and they give it away. Trying to take it all the way down, and the layup is not there. And give it back to Sacred Heart. TRA with eight points off turnovers by Sacred Heart. And we've had a seesaw game here in this third quarter. Actually, for the offensive power of both of these teams, it's been a very low-scoring affair. They got them spread out, going for the three again. Yes, sir. Xander Taylor with only his second one of the game. Here you go again. That is our fifth lead change of this half. And the floating left-handed shot goes through for Alex Blue. Timeout called. And another lead change. 2.59 remaining. 36-35. TRA back on top. And we'll be back in a moment. Welcome to Man's Record Service. We offer a wide array of services. We are dedicated towing professionals experienced in both simple and complicated towing services. We offer light and heavy-duty off-road recovery, auto and heavy-duty towing, load shift and load transfer capabilities, and much more. We are equipped to handle any situation, no matter how big or how small. Call today at 731-424-2173. to go in this third quarter. Sacred Heart and TRA have been changing the lead and another big three for Xander Taylor who is now beginning to find his range. He's got nine. He's now three out of nine in the game but he has had two of his last three to drop. And we have had six lead changes in this half. And that foul is going. That foul is charged to Andre Bell, his second. Tell you what, this blue is a strong ball handler, but he's going to give this one up. The speed is going to pick it up for Sacred Heart. Big three again for Taylor. He went to the deck, but no call. Offensive board for the Knights, and the foul is charged to Sean Taylor. That will be his third. And that's the fifth team foul of the half. Pardon me, the third team foul of the half. So let's see how the Knights play it. Here's the guy with the hot hand, the floater. It does not fall. Oh, my goodness, that one had a lid on it. Taylor had the good look and went with that one-handed floater, and it just fell right. Big three. Yes. Yes. Sam Cannon playing with three fouls, and that is his first three of the game. How about seven lead changes in this half? 
Going for the bomb again. No, off to the right. Bell had an opportunity, a good look. Nobody was near him, but it just wouldn't drop. Down to a minute and a half in the third quarter. A tenuous one-point lead, almost a steal, and it is a steal. Let's see if he takes it on the inside. Yes, and the foul. Andre Bell. Talk about determination. He picked that one up, and it's the ninth point off of a turnover by TRA. The foul is on Eli Grambling, and that is, no, let me change that back. That is Sean Taylor, his fourth. So he hits the bench very, very quickly. I got to tell you, we've had eight lead changes in the third quarter. Blink your eyes, and somebody else is on top. Right through the heart for Bell. He's got nine, scoring evenly distributed. Trey Troll with seven, Malachi Chavis with ten, nine for Taylor, nine for Bell, nine for Mormon, six for Kale. Kale's on the bench with four fouls. Right down the middle in the foul. There's a good job of ball handling by Alex Blue. And that one is on Trey Troll. It is his third. Short. Blue has 10 in the game. He's two for three from the line. Gets the second of the two. One point game. This has just been like watching a seesaw on a playground as far as the lead has been concerned. And again, they decided not to go on the inside with Taylor. Going for the bomb. No, off to the right. And there you go once again with Blue on the rebound. The three, off the mark. Here you go, he's got space. Down the stretch, no! He needed to just lay it up, and Taylor tried to cram it home, and it went out. That's the second time tonight that's happened. Rebound comes off to Truel. Trying to go through everybody, but the follow shot is there for Chavis. 43 to 40. This will probably be the final possession of the third quarter. You hear the chance of defense. Kicking it to the outside. The big bomb three is off the mark. He's going to have to put a wild one up. Can he do it? No, 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 no. He should not have taken the bounce. He may not have hit it, but he took that bounce, and that cost him an opportunity at a basket, 43 to 40. What a third quarter that was with eight lead changes. We'll be back after this message. 27 years ago, a vision became a reality and Snookum Steakhouse officially opened. We cut our steaks in-house and our ribeyes are full of flavor. The steak trimmings are used to make our certified Angus Beef Steak Burgers, so when you order at Snookums, you are getting high quality. Enjoy our salad bar and mini dessert. Also try our famous family recipe, the Pink Lush Fruit Salad. Come visit Snookum Steakhouse in Henderson, Tennessee. We are open evenings Tuesday through Saturday, but closed Sunday to Monday. Snookum Steakhouse, come taste the difference. Sacred Heart outscored TRA 22 to 15 in that third quarter, and that was one of the most exciting ones you'll ever see in high school basketball. Big factor in the game now is Sacred Heart has committed, each team has now committed 10, 10 turnovers, but Sacred Heart now has converted to nine points off those mistakes by TRA, and TRA had been doing a much better job off turnovers in the first half. And I tell you what, this is relentless defense on the part of TRA. One-handed jumper falls through for Andre Bell. He has eight in the game. 
And that was a kick out of bounds, and it went off of the foot of Blue. Turnover number 11 for the Rebels. The Knights with their largest lead of the game at 45 to 40. Now protecting the basketball. Oh, and that is just as we saw it, trying to protect the basketball and was trying to get it into Truel, but it was way wide. So Taylor gives it right back up. That is not what you want to see when you have a potential of going into a three-possession lead against a, an absolutely relentless opponent. Almost stolen again. Out of bounds. It goes to the ninth. This has been an intense defensive battle. That was the right call, though. For a minute there, it looked as though they were open for a three. And they're going to go for the bomb. No, off to the right. But on the offensive rebound, it is Trey Truel. And the Knights with 11 points off of TRA mistakes. 47-40, now a three-possession lead. Now it's going to be endurance and stamina as we go down the stretch. The big three answer shot is there. You knew Bird was going to come back with one, and timeout is called. It's 47-43, Sacred Heart on top. Enjoy this message for you. This could be a true story. On October 3rd, a 2003 hatchback struck and killed a deer that goes by the name Buck. I know, right? He now has Buck's head proudly displayed on his living room wall. He tells a different story. Shot it. No, he didn't. And to hide his lie, he took his car to Mitchell's body shop. No, I didn't. Yes, he did. Oh. And lucky for him, they made it look good as new. And as for Buck, the story continues. Late in the third quarter, momentum swung back to Sacred Heart. They have a two-possession lead at 47-43. But they're getting all-court pressure. They got to get it across in 10, and they do. Dangerous cross-court pass. And yet another one. They are really spreading out the defense and going on to somewhat of a 2-3 zone right now, or a 2-1-2. Two, two. Big three. No, short. But gets the offensive board again, and the foul. Excellent job by Trey Truel to get that offensive board. He crashed to the floor, but he'll go to the line. He'll shoot two. The foul was charged to Eli Ramsey, his first. That was Truel's first free throw of the game. He has now 10 points. Sacred Heart's going to send two back in the backcourt. Blue is all the way down. And it's back to a six-point margin. And we got a half-court trap being employed by the Knights. And they finally get it across. We're under six minutes to go. It's been a dandy so far. Hope you've enjoyed it tonight, live from David Hunt Court. Open for the three. Yes, sir. That was a tremendous opportunity because they had the defenders all to the left and Sam Cannon on the right. And all the way down, the bank shot is not there. They got the offensive board and the foul. They have relentlessly gone after these offensive rebounds, and Truel again is fouled. It's not going to be a shooting foul. That's on Tano Sims, and that is his first. So the Knights will play it underneath. Wide open and not seeing him over in the corner is Andre Bell. They absolutely didn't see him. He had a great look at a three. Nobody was close to him. Taylor thought about pumping it, and he thought better of it after he was challenged by Blue. 
Down the middle. And the foul. And that is going to be a one and one because that is the seventh team foul. That's the second foul on Eli Ramsey. And so that sends Taylor to the line. He has not been there so far tonight. Gets the friendly roll. This one to put the Knights back into a two-possession lead. And they're trying to, I'm trying to see who they're trying to attend to down there who went down. And I can't catch the number right now. Let's see. That is Eli Ramsey who committed the foul, and he is hobbling badly on that ankle. And he's going over to the trainer's table. Hopefully it's something that he can work off, but he's getting out of that shoe very, very quickly. Those things, I am telling you, I have in 30 years of calling college basketball, I can tell you I've seen enough of those, and they can be one of the most painful of injuries. So attempting now to make it a five-point lead, Xander Taylor. And again, the longer you hold this lead, the more emotional energy it takes out of a team like TRA because they're constantly having to climb the mountain late in the game. They slow the tempo down as we approach the five-minute mark. And trying to go right down. And they're open again for the same play and the same three for Sam Cannon. It has worked twice in a row. And Cannon is hot. A two-point lead for the Knights. And almost scrambled. And it is stolen. And on the inside, Cannon cannot get it. But he was fouled. He was almost bumped completely out of bounds. And that's what I talk about. This team does not quit. They do not fold whatsoever. And Cannon has some suddenly come out of nowhere and has a chance to go double figures. That is the third foul on Andre Bell. Short. Oh. Air ball. Rarity that you said. It used to be in high school basketball many, many, many years ago that if you had an air ball after the first shot, you did not get the second one. They took that rule out about 40 years ago. And he got a friendly bounce on that one, but it's still a one-point lead for the Knights. Going for the three. Yes, sir. Taylor, his fourth three, and he has 14. That was a big one for Sacred Heart. And again, Cannon was open. They are not defending him well there, and the Knights lose it out of bounds. They've got Jake Kale back in the game with four fouls. They've got to have his leadership in there. So they're going to take a gamble to keep him in the game at this stage. And they go to the corner for the three. Yes, sir. Dono Sims with his second three of the second half, and it's once again a one-point game. And timeout called. It's a full timeout. It is a one-point lead for the Knights. Come back and see the high drama after this. Men, there's a new salon in Jackson, Race Clips, on South Highland, next door to Roland Safety and Supply. Whether it's a quick trim or a new look, Race Clips stylists can transform you to perfection. At Race Clips, you'll find all the products to keep you looking your best. Active duty military, veterans, and law enforcement officers receive a discount. Open Monday through Friday from 9 to 6, 9 to 3 on Saturday. Race Clips on South Highland, Jackson. Go to race-clips.com. In the third quarter, we had eight lead changes in the game. And then Sacred Heart has pretty well controlled it with leads between one and seven. 
here in the fourth quarter. It's back to one, and we're under four minutes remaining. It's been a tremendous coaching duel between these two guys that lead, and that one was a way off the mark one. Good fake in the foul. Kale not losing his concentration. This has been a big key is the offensive rebounds for Sacred Heart. That's nine of them here in the second half. Kale at the line for two, and both of these are big. Nails the first one. He'd been on the bench a long time with four fouls, but they got to have his leadership out there on the floor. Nobody else except, well, Troll and Bell have three fouls. Got them both. Under pressure. Back to a three-point lead with 344 remaining. And back in that half-court trap defense. And trying to take it all the way down. Yep. That was Bird, who was just not going to be denied. He saw the opening and went right down the middle. 19 points. Back to a one-point game. You feel the pressure yet at home? <laughs> if you don't, you just don't have a nerve in your body. Good move on the inside by Trull. 11 points for Trey Trull. Back to the three-point lead with three minutes remaining. Almost stolen. Quick hands over there by Trull. And they're good. Intense defensive pressure. That's going to be a two if it goes, and it banks through for Alex Blue. For Blue, that is 15, and we're back to the one-point game. For the three, Taylor, no, it's off the mark, and the rebound comes off to Bird, his ninth rebound of the game. And he slows the tempo. Folks, get your blood pressure medicine ready because it's going to be this way all the way down to the end. And the three. Yes, sir. That young man is red hot. Sam Cannon now with four threes in the game, 13 points. The ninth lead change of this half. And on the inside, short. Oh, my goodness. Tyler Bird just did not get enough height on that shot. Now it's going to be interesting to see if they try to play it to run some clock off with their lead. Cannon, he is intense and does not get it. What a rebound. It's two on one, and instead underneath it goes. They back off and Truel with a big one to tie it at 60. 90 seconds remaining. And timeout is called. You can't ask for it to be any better than this. The nerves are rocking. We'll be back in 30 seconds. At Lonnie Kai Ford, we now give you a warranty for life on the engine and transmission. That's right, a warranty for life at no cost to you. Unlimited time, unlimited mileage, but it's only at Lonnie Kai Ford in Henderson, where cars really are cheaper in the country. Downtown is thriving and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. We're tied at 60 with 85 seconds remaining. And you can see how that enthusiastic crowd is attempting to rally the Knights home with this one. The girls won 68 to 64 in what was a down to the wire thriller. And here we go. Another big factor right now, the Knights are in the bonus. But it belongs to TRA. Couldn't get anybody open, finally did and losing it out of bounds, and it goes 
to Sacred Heart. 13th turnover of the game. 81 seconds left. With a tie game at this point, I don't think they just try to play it for a final shot. I think if they get an open look, they're going to go for it. Taylor faked it. Kale almost tossed it aside. For the three. No. And the rebound comes off to Thano Sims, a big one. And the foul, and that is going to put them in the bonus. The foul is charged to Malachi Chavis, and that is his first. No, they charge it again. Yeah, somebody got the wrong call on the PA announcer. It was Malachi Chavis. That is his first. At the line for one and one, Tyler Bird. He is two out of three tonight and missed it. And the rebound to Kale, and that was a big one. Now they're down under 50 seconds. Want to take it to the inside, right through everybody. True with a big basket. We're under 40. Timeout called. We're going to keep it right here, 62 to 60. Hang on, we may have overtime. You may want to get a can of Chef Boy RD out for it because you may need to eat a little bit through this one. Let's look at how the scoring has been. Taylor with 14 for Sacred Heart. And then Truel, I'm trying to add up his totals as we go here. Truel with 17, 13 of them here in the second half. Malachi Chavis with 12. And A.J. Mormon with 9. Andre Bell has got 8. And Jake Kale with 5. Kale playing with four fouls on the other side. Tyler Bird has had himself a fantastic night. 19 points and nine rebounds. Alex Blue, 15 points. Sam Cannon, a tremendous second half with four threes, 13 points. You actually, if you are TRA at this stage of the game, you probably want to try to get it in the hands of Cannon because he has had a tremendous hot hand. We're going to keep it right here again. They saw what the alignment was going to be and decided to call another timeout. Both teams are in the bonus. So it's one of those situations where, you know, if you felt comfortable about committing a foul, it's a risk-reward type situation. The Rebels have committed 18 fouls, 17 fouls for Sacred Heart. So... TRA is closer to putting Sacred Heart in the double bonus. There's your buzzer. And 36.6 seconds until we have the verdict. Is it a win for one of these teams or do we go at it three more minutes? And they go behind the line. And they're trying to get that screen. Turn around. It's there. Perfect one for Tyler Bird. 21 points. We are tied. You can bet they're probably going for the last one. We're going to watch this one with you. 10 seconds remaining. On the inside. They got to hurry. In the corner, they lose it. Big one down the floor, and it was, oh, my goodness. Just a little bit too high off the glass. He took his eye off the ball, and all of a sudden, it was in the hands of Tyler Bird, and he flew that thing down, and it looked as though it was going to go through. It was just a bit too high and too hard. So we're going to play overtime, and somehow you knew it was going to happen. Let's take a 60-second break, and we'll be back. Football looks fun. I bet I would have been great at it. The first football playing deer, they would have made a movie about me and everything. Probably get Kurt Russell to play me. But alas, me and my dreams run right over again. For fast, reliable collision repair, trust the experts at Mitchell's Body Shop. 
and get back out there. Hey, if you're looking for something different, come to Lou's Crawfish for curbside pickup. Hey, if you're looking for something different, come to Lou's Crawfish for curbside pickup. Hey, if you're looking for something different, come to Lou's Crawfish for curbside pickup. Four minute overtime. It's going to be a dandy just as the entire game has been. And Sacred Heart gets the tip. And for the three, it will not fall. And the rebound to Tyler Bird. That is his 11th rebound. And he takes his time down the floor. They work the perimeter. Boy, intense dribble penetration on the part of Cannon. That one goes astray. Here they go. It's going to be a one-on-one -on -one race to the basket. Down the stretch and the foul. How about that for A.J. Mormon? And that is the ninth team foul. It is the fourth foul on Sam Cannon, and that is a big one. They're not going to take him out at this stage. Three-point play for A.J. He's got eight in the contest. Back to the three-point lead for the Knights. Look at the rotation on this offense. They're really trying hard to defend the three and to try to keep. And a foul called away from the ball. And that foul is charged to Taylor, his third. And the one and one for Tyler Bird. We'll watch it with you. Bird, money in the bank. On the night, he is three out of five from the line. Under pressure, four out of six. Back to the one point lead. They're spreading out the defenders and going right inside. Taking the advantage is true. They have exploited the paint here in the last three minutes of the regulation and then here in the first minute of overtime. What a thriller we've had tonight. Intense defensive pressure on Chavis and they charge him with a foul. Chavis didn't like the call and neither did the Sacred Heart fans. And once again, this time, Alex Blue to the line. Blue is three of four. Got it. Smooth, soft free throw. Got them both. This is delivery time now. Free throw line everywhere else and every possession so vital. And in between the defenders, the dish off, it's not there. And here they go in transition. And Bird almost lost it, but pulls back. Down by one is TRA. Bird issuing instructions to his teammates. And he slid on the line. That is turnover number 14, and that could be a crucial one. Let's see how the Knights play it as we are approaching two minutes remaining in overtime. All the fans in this place, you can feel the electricity. Under two. And again, somebody's got to come out and help. Jump ball and alternate possession is going to the Rebels. Turnover number 13 for the Knights. They have really been hemming up on the inside the last two possessions. Trey Truel 
A minute 45 to go. In the corner. And open was Cannon, but they picked him up very quickly. Here's a steal. Here goes Taylor. Yes! Taylor timed that steal perfectly. 13 points off turnovers. The floater is not there, and the Knights with the rebound. And a technical foul is called. And so going to the line is Xander Taylor. Technical foul, and what a horrible time for that to happen for TRA. So he's got two shots with nobody on the line. And they're still arguing with the official about it. Alex Blue was charged with the technical. Short. That is not what they wanted to see from Taylor. That's his first miss at the line from tonight, but he really needs this one to make it a two possession lead. Got it. And the ball goes back to Sacred Heart with 73 seconds remaining, a four point lead. Let's see if they shave some time off the clock with a two possession lead. They came out to double team the ball and he's gonna call timeout. Let's take a quick 30 second break. Knights on top in overtime, 70 to 66. Hello folks, this is Gary Dean, right here at Dean's Carpet One. I wanna let you know we've been in business for 48 years. Here's what I believe has made the difference. Our lifetime labor work on everything we install. Our healthy living installation, bacteria and germs cannot survive in our new flooring. Our beautiful guarantee, if you don't just love it, we'll replace it. It will make your flooring experience priceless. We're located on Freedom Highway, 1000 Highway 45 Bypass in good old Jackson, Tennessee. These fans and probably the players feel like they've been through the ringer of an old Maytag washing machine. It's been that kind of game, but the fourth quarter was one where it was just up and down. We had in the second half nine lead changes. Sacred Heart controls it here with 66 seconds left in overtime, 70 to 66. I've enjoyed it and I hope you have too. Almost stolen. And again, they're shaving time off the clock. It'll be interesting to see if they try to commit a foul. Kale is hemmed up in the corner. And they finally commit the foul. Alex Blue with his third, and it is a two-shot foul because they are in the double bonus. If he makes two of them, it is a full two-possession lead. It would require three twos or two threes on the part of the Rebels to tie it. With 48.7 seconds remaining, it is Xander Taylor on the line. 17 points tonight. Oh! That was one of those that you just looked at it and you thought it was right there and the iron was just simply unkind. But this is still a biggie because, and it was short. They got the offensive board and the foul and a frustration it was for Thanos Sims trying to get it away and he commits the foul and so it is another two shot opportunity this time for A.J. Mormon. He's not the biggest guy on the floor, but he was scrambling, clawing for that offensive board. No, three misses in a row. Not the time you want to see that happen. They at least need this one.
That time they got the friendly roll. 71-66, and they're going to go to all-court pressure. And a big three, way short. And the rebound comes off to Andre Bell and the foul. And you could see Nano Sims. That was not a well-advised shot because he had a big hand in his face. He gets these two free throws, and it potentially is the dagger. Thano did not like that call at all. And Dylan Butler was charged with the foul. Got the roll. Bell with nine. This for a three-possession lead. Short. There's still life for TRA, but they have got to do it quick. And going down, and that is a foul. It's an offensive foul. Jake Kale drew his fourth offensive foul of the game. And that may have been the dagger right there. They won't go to the line, but they get possession, and everybody is coming back to try to get a stop. That was the fourth foul on Alex Blue. And apparently they're not going to try to challenge it that hard. Down to the last 15 seconds and the foul. That one is on Bird, his third. And Sacred Heart's going to win it. Xander Taylor to the line. This has been one of those gritty, workmanlike, blue-collar games. But the Knights are going to prevail. Taylor with 18. And here comes all of the benches being cleared. Short, got the offensive board. And this is going to be it. He's just going to dribble out the game time. And without, and he's going to go for the bomb. It's not there. This one had every bit of drama that you could imagine. And the Knights have won it 73 to 66 in overtime. What a finish. And they're getting greeted by their fans on the floor. It's not exactly what you'd call storm the court, but I guess it was to storm the inline. Let me give you the totals as we begin to wrap this one up. For TRA that played an absolutely magnificent game in defeat, 23 points for Tyler Bird along with 11 rebounds. Alex Blue. He came home with 16 points. And then Sam Cannon had those four three-pointers. He had 13 in the game. They were your leaders. For Sacred Heart, it was Xander Taylor. And boy, down the stretch did he play some magnificent ball. 15 points. He had four three-pointers in the game. Let me try that again. I think I'm off on that total. Let me recalculate. Now, 15 points for Xander Taylor. And then Trey Truel, boy, he was getting some key rebounds down the stretch himself. And Truel with 19 points. Malachi Chavis with 12. A.J. Mormon, who had a couple of big free throws down the stretch. And he went home with eight. Andre Bell with nine. And then Jake Kale, and he was playing with four fouls, but his leadership was so vital down the stretch. He ended up with five, and what a night it was for the Knights. There's just nothing else you could say about it. A tremendous finish for it as Sacred Heart 
wins it 73 to 66 in overtime. And I think there are a lot of people now will have to go home and take a nerve pill just to be able to survive this one. It's been great to be with you tonight and with our entire Worthy Road Studios crew. We'll be with you tomorrow at Union University for Union against Valdosta State. And I hope you'll be joining us. Our airtime is 145, and it'll be on E Plus TV6 in Jackson, EPlusTV6.com, and the Union University Athletics page on the World Wide Web. We got to go. It's been a good night. The Lady Knights winning at 68 to 64 in another thriller that they had an 18 point lead and had to survive. And the Knights winning it in overtime, 73 to 66. I'm Steve Beverly, and on behalf of our fantastic crew who has been doing all of the job on the floor tonight, saying come back to see us every chance you get, and so long from the great hub city of West Tennessee. <laughs>